All right, so last time when in Falloncourt, uh, sent to the city of Bayside at the request of an unknown higher up in the organization known as the Secret Peace, an organization you know very little about other than that they help people on a grand scale. You were sent on a mission to track a package to a destination. Uh, you are seeking to covertly do so by applying for positions as guards on the ship the Drone Dairy, where you were told the package was a one foot long uh, small black crate or some sort of a chest of some sort. After meeting with Captain McLaren, he told you to come back after the, at the end of the third day to check in so you could be uh, told whether you made the cut or not for the positions. In the last two of the three days, you have shopped for supplies, clothes, raw materials at the Rat Barrel General Store and, some, and a couple others. Uh, Pell picked up a, a set of custom rings that he ordered. Vork got a change of wardrobe. Samael and Pell got some pipes and some smoking materials. Ugbor got some additional supplies to help with seasickness, as well as some mysterious edibles from the Tabaxi Sinkara. Uh, you found drink and merriment at a tavern known as the Bobbing Cork down next to the water of the town of uh, Bayside. Uh, at the Bobbing Cork, you overheard some conversations, missing some others, and you witnessed the dark game between Grover and a Tabaxi named Winter Moon. Something strange happened during the game, and someone fell through rotten floorboards and broke his leg. Grover casually commented on how strange things like this happen around him sometimes, and he doesn't really know why. You also met up with two other familiar faces. Captain Garland, who apparently relocated after a mysterious disappearance and didn't quite seem himself. And um, another face uh, that you guys know by the name... Um, Oh, my brain blanked on me. Shoot. Uh, Chamber here, he'd know. The, 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 the where at. Help me out. Uh, fucking... Uh... Oh, my uh, God. I have to look on that little sheet. Oh, gosh. What is his name? Uh... Fuck, I can't remember. Uh, um, anyway, that guy. Uh, and, uh, so you saw those two familiar faces... Um, you also attended and participated in a dart tournament, ultimately winning Vork against Grover and winning his long-held title, but not after some unexplained difficulties in competing against him. Pale's able to detect two magical items potentially at play during the contest, the tortoise shell glasses worn by Wintermoon and the decorative belt on the waist of Grover. Vork was stirred from his rest last night by a shadow in his, in his second story window, but when he investigated, there wasn't uh, anything that turned up. You wake from restful sleep in your small cozy rooms in the upstairs of Helga's bed and breakfast. It is early, just after sunrise, but your bodies are determined to wake up due to the light, smells of cooked food downstairs, and the commotion of people in the nearby streets. As you begin the third day, and the day that at some point, you're going to learn how to proceed on your mission. What do you do? Um. Huh. <laughs> About that. The gods are <laughs> So, I don't know, I was just going to wake up. I'm going to look at, I'm going to actually fix my spells real quick if I can. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is, it is a new day. Feel free to prepare your spells. So yeah. we've completed a long rest then? You've completed a long rest. Yeah. I think we've had like three since we've been here. I think I already did this and, last time uh, we played too. Do I recover one level of exhaustion? I think you are at zero levels at this point, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, you should be good now. You have no levels, no levels of exhaustion. Your spell slots have reset, and you're at full health for all intents and purposes. And if you want to like switch your spells out and shoot, you can. He is a wizard. He, uh, does, what, what, what potential does he have for that? I'm not familiar. He can do it every day. Can he? Okay, cool. Yep. Doesn't Just, it take uh, like some kind of? Uh, oh, oh, yeah, that's right. He, he just doesn't have access to his entire spell list like you do as a cleric. Yeah. 
cool, cool. Mm-hmm. He has to like learn spells and stuff. So you, you can pick from his book and have a certain number prepared, but he has to prepare them. Cool, yep. gotcha. <laughs> Oh, Harold. Yeah, dude, he's a big boofer. <laughs> no, I'm pretty much going to keep what I got. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. The smell of bacon and fresh biscuits fill your, fills your nose as you wait in your small rooms, letting the uh, sunrise wash over your face, and you uh, just sit, kind of waking yourself up for a moment before uh, continuing. Yeah, well, first of all, I'm going to get some of that food. Something sure smells good. You I like walk downstairs. a wad of wax from his ear. Oh, Flicks it onto the wall by his bed. Mm-hmm. They're like, food food sounds good. Let's 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 go get that food. This thing, pale, I kind of expected you to be a uh, a vegetarian. Yeah, it still smells good. Hmm. As you walk downstairs, you see two patrons uh, leave the building. Um, one person is at the front desk with Helga, and after finishing some business, they uh, uh, transact keys, and the person then walks out the door as well, shutting it behind him. Helga looks up at you. Oh, did you have a good rest? Oh, yes. Good morning, Helga. Good morning. Glad to see you. There's, uh, we got some biscuits and meats in the other room, some fresh fruit laid out as well. You, uh, we are happy to have you stay with us another night if you're in town, but if not, you're welcome to eat your fill and be on your way. Um, I thank you very much for your patronage. Thank you for having us here. Anytime. Anytime. You guys are great. Hell, I can get a biscuit and go towards all the fruit. Does I foresee any plates around the food? Um, there are some wooden plates that are uh, stacked on a side table. Uh, the food is kind of laid out on. It's in the in the room behind the front room. Um, so in the front room, it's kind of rectangular, and there's the, the L-shaped desk that sits uh, right inside there. Again, that, this is uh, the house is relatively small comparatively to what you're we've been in before. But uh, to, just to the right of the L-shaped desk is a doorway that leads back into another room. That room is rectangular, but long way facing backwards. And in that room is a long table with the food prepared on it, and there are side tables with the uh, with the plates and cups and uh, accoutrements, and um, there's uh, chairs basically. In various places in the room to sit. Okay, uh, a boy's gonna grab a plate and just start piling on the bacon, just gratuitous amounts of bacon. He gets a couple biscuits and heads on out. You wanna add some fruit to that, buddy? You need a balanced breakfast. Why? To make you stronger. I already am strong. But you can be stronger. Nah, I'm alright. What's it gonna do, make me live longer? I, 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 you know I'm about middle-aged. I, I'm, on, I'm, on the, I'm on the receding side now. I think I might be too, but, you know, I've lived a pretty long life. I'm not a pretty young guy, 200 years <laughs> I ate a lot of fruit, it helped. And I eat a lot of meat. So, make your tummy we're hurt. done talking about our meat here. Wanna get me some food too? You gotta get the hell out of my way. No oh, snap. You look more restful this morning. Yeah, feeling great. Feeling great. One day, how long is Connor came in? Never mind, and he's gone. Like a fart in the wind. I swear, man. Just fucking whatever. Anyways. Yeah, I feel great. Feel much better today than I did yesterday, that's for sure. Yeah, me and Bork didn't really see you guys much the other day. Yeah, I'm uh, honestly not looking forward to this whole boat thing. 
I know it was my idea, but uh, that's a great idea. It sounds like a terrible idea. I've been here for cool. two days, and I'm just the dread is slowly rising. It'll all be worth it in the end. It's true. We could swim instead. That will take a lot longer. I'm not. Yeah, that good I could. Of a I could definitely either. swim. I could do the swim. I could. I could swim for the rest of my life. It tell, wouldn't be uh, very long. Be bad. Tell, tell rub his stomach and be like, I'm, I'm not really that good of a swimmer. Oh boy, looking around the room, um, thinking about your boat ride coming up, you uh, it, it fills you with a little bit of dread and anxiety. Um, and you, you think back to the medicine you were given and look around the room, and you realize you don't have any way on your, on your person to prepare the the herbal tea that you basically were given. You have the ingredients, but you don't know what's on the boat. You don't know, you, you don't have a cup on you. You don't have any means of fire. You don't know what to do with that. Well, crap. Do we have to give up our tender boxes? <clears throat> I mean, I don't think so. Oh man, I don't have a tinder box. <laughs> what happened? Oh, oh, there it is. Uh, it's in my back. Well, r rather, re re sorry, rephrase. You don't know how you can start a fire on a boat in the middle of the ocean to brew oh, tea. Ooh, that's true. That's true. So, uh, you know, while I'm thinking about it, how do I. How am I going to cook on this boat, guys? You talking about your little tea you have to make? Yeah, yeah. I got, I got some, some leaf here, and yeah, that's. Couldn't you just make it beforehand? So, uh, yeah. I have a herbalism kit. Could I like use that and make it? Yeah, I don't know. Oh, it's in a, herb in a herbalism kit. Let me look at it real quick. No, I got it, I got it. No. You, you, you forget I have three monitors here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Contains a variety of instruments such as clippers, mortar, pistol, pouches, and vials. Okay, um, roll me a, we'll, we'll call this a nature check. Uh, oh man, I'm real good at that. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, are, are you proficient with herbalism kit? Or no? Yeah. Okay, you are. Um, yeah. You think that somehow you can use your herbalism kit to help with the preparation of these herbs, but you're not sure how exactly. Hmm. I'm sorry, can you say that again? Um, you, you believe that you can use your herbalism kit to help with the preparation of the, of the herbs that Igbor needs for his medicine. Uh, but you're not exactly sure how. Like you, you think you have all the tools there. You're just trying to put the puzzle together, but it's not coming together for you. Hmm. Oh yeah. See, maybe maybe that thing there. I tap some glass. Like maybe that's that's what we need. Maybe. Maybe you can just smoke it. <laughs> Pull out my little Gandalf pop. <laughs> Smoke, smoke mint leaf. You never know. I got a feeling. I got a feeling. Uh, 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 smoking mint and dried berries is a good way to um, die. I don't. It's like a bad idea. It sounds tasty. Well, I have a lot here. You want to try it? No. Okay. Maybe we can ask Helga, see if she can make it. Yeah, but then how do I transport it? Maybe I could buy a tankard. Maybe. Or multiple bottles. I, uh... I approach Helga. Well, uh, is she in the room with us? No, she's in the front room. Okay. 
Well, I, I stand up and munch on a few more pieces of bacon, then uh, head off about my way to find Helga. Uh, as soon as you come in the room, are you heading out, dear? Uh, no, I actually wanted to know if I provided... Wait a minute. I was out of character. Gotta dumb it down a little bit. <laughs> Provided the three-syllable uh, word. I was, <laughs> I was wondering if you could do cooking with these. You want me to to brew you some tea? Is that what you're asking? Yeah. Uh, well, do you have like, you know, a, a tankard or something that I could keep it in? Well, you sure. Know, um, days? Uh, I suppose I could do that. How much? I mean, we have full, you have full access to the to foods in there, and I I, I can certainly bring you some uh, some tea and things. Um, I don't have uh, tankers. Uh, I could probably scrounge up a few bottles if you want me to to bottle you some for the road. Um, I, I could. I, I have a minute. I I can oblige you on that. That would be great. Um, how much should I pay you? No, oh, don't don't worry about it, hon. It's hot water and glass. Oh. Oh. I I, I lean out of the the front room. Do I have do I have sight of Pell? Uh, yeah. If you you're standing basically in the doorway, uh, between rooms, and, and so so you can see both him and her in different directions. All right. Uh, hey, hey, dumbass. Yeah, it's 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 this stuff with hot water. That's the part we couldn't figure out. Huh. Yeah. Well, hell. Yeah. You learn something new every day. Yeah. Water. Well, all right, Helga. Thank you so much. Uh, when can I? Uh, how long does it take? Oh, get hours. Get, like, get, give me, get, give me, give me. And she jumps off the stool she was on, where she was roughly at your height, a little bit less. And as she hops off, she pops on the ground, and she is now like top of her head is at your waist. And she reaches her hand up. Give me the herbs. I'll take care of it. It should be done in about a half hour. Okay. And from my backpack, I pull out just this huge wad of, of herbs and dried berries. <laughs> and Helga reaches up with both hands, doing doing the grabby hands thing, and gets both both the uh, satchels of material. It... it, it it dwarfs the small lady, but uh, it, being being dried herbs and things, it's not heavy, so she's able to kind of you know tuck it down over her back like a like a giant backpack. Only it's like only uh, as big as your head, but it's large on her. And she walks through through the room and uh, heads towards the fireplace where the kettle is. I'm gonna remove that from my inventory and return back to uh, Pell and Samael. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she was a she, she. She's good. She's all right. She's gonna make it for me. Maybe you should learn one day. Yeah, you know, hot water, dried earth. That's some pretty advanced stuff. I think no. I think I'm just gonna stick to killing it and eating it, and that's all you need, right? It, sometimes fire. I'm gonna roll my eyes while I take a bite of this bacon. You know, I just never really liked tea all that much. I have to look at my equipment, and I have this item. I hope I put a description on it. Some stuff that is supposed to help with potential sickness. Flirty turdy, forget the icky wicky. Was that in your inventory? That is in my inventory. I what think in the, the world? Um. Okay. Okay. Uh, th that would if it's, if it's if it's that then it's um. It's a small brown uh, cloth bag that contains three uh, individual items that you were told were edible. Okay. Three brownies. That threw me entirely off. I forgot where I was. I was not expecting <laughs> to see that. Anyway. <laughs> Um, so just as a heads up on the video, you guys are going to watch me at this point, like, 
frantically uh, try to make another page because I forgot to include an image, <laughs> like a little that thing. It's good stuff. Anyway, go on. Yeah, so uh, she's making me the stuff. I'm gonna get some bottles. She's doing it for free. She's a nice lady. So when is this boat taking off? In like Oops. some time, you know, a, a couple hours, a day, a few weeks, right? You know, just a couple weeks. No, I think we're supposed to know later today if we got hired or not. Nah, surely it's a couple yeah, weeks. Yeah, I think it was positive. later today. No, I think he said in three days. Three days from now? Okay. No, three days from three days ago. <laughs> oh. Board deflates a little bit. <laughs> Wait. One second. One second. One second. I even had this fucking spell. Power word kill? Hmm. No. get married excuse me <laughs> you wanna <laughs> that by me again <laughs> nothing no I don't think I have what the fuck what is it, is it called courage you talking about like guidance bless uh... no what's the one that makes them immune to fear well, I'm afraid, I don't know. Hang on. Oh, fuck. Immune fear sure spell. spell. Heroes Feast will do that. Mm. Heroes Feast, what? Uh, Heroes Feast, I mean, I, I, I read that that does that. Um... Heroism. Heroism. Yep, there you go. I don't think I learned it. Never mind. So, yeah, uh, you you, uh, you watch uh, Pell talking to you, and then he says, hang on a second, let me think. And then he just stares off in the distance for like a solid two minutes. <laughs> then he can't do it. He comes back, he's like, nope, can't do that. Hugboard just stares blankly at him and shakes his head and sits back down and starts eating. Sorry. That's my bad. Yeah, um... I'm not sure what's happening right now, so... It's alright. I was just thinking about stuff. I like to think, I like to too. Out. That's a lie. I don't like to think at all. It's alright. Uh, it's never really helped me much. Ugbor, you feel a tug on your on your uh, your coat as the uh, as the halfling woman comes by and she gives a few tugs. It's ready. Oh, awesome! Now it's still a little bit hot, so you know, mind mind your hands, maybe. And you see her hold up a. Um, a uh, little serving tray with five small bottles on it. They're all uh, like a dark purple hued tea, like a tea that was brewed with maybe some uh, some blackberry or something that gives it a dark hue. And they're all small little bottles that are uh, tear shaped, and they are wrapped with a leather cord on top and cord. All of them identical. Five bottles of uh, what seemed to be some uh, some some dichotomy. Yes, to go. Uh, each one should be good for a serving, I think. That's it. That was your goal. That was absolutely my goal. I did it again. Um, yeah, thank you so much. No problem. Thank you so much, Helga. If you need anything else, let me know. And if you see anybody that might need somewhere to stay, you, uh, you shoot them my way, eh? You know it.
Well, is there anything you guys need to do in town? <laughs> no, I'm I'm pretty much set. I'm ready to go. And then John. Yeah, so uh <clears throat> which one of you guys tends to get hit a whole lot? Uh, uh not me. I try not to get hit like Vork from the back cool. raises his hand. <laughs> yeah, so, whoever wants to, he'll like pull out one of the little rings. He'll be like, I can give you this. What does it do? I uh, I can cast a little spell on it that will uh, it'll make you a little bit harder to hit, and it makes you a little bit stronger in case you do get hit by stuff. Makes you a little bit harder. Makes you a little bit harder. Impossible. Yeah. Impossible. <laughs> harder, faster, stronger, harder. Harder, better, faster, stronger. Do it. Make us. Just if anybody wants it. Hey, listen. That I'll take it if if he doesn't want it, but I don't really care. I don't need no fancy magics. Give me the fucking ring, man. All right, I'll give you one. I'll take uh, it. Just got a big ass platinum ring now. Nice. Lap. I'm gonna hold it up above my head and it's gonna be this music play. Da 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 da. Da 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 da. Not for real. Are, 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 are you say, are, are you saying this with your with your own voice, Samuel? Like, are you just making the music with your mouth? Yeah. That's exactly, <laughs> what happened. That's exactly what happened. Exactly what happened. Thanks. So, uh, so what'd you do to the ring? No, nothing. I just have to say a few words over top of it. Well, here you go. Say your words. No, not yet. Oh. Well. It only lasts a, a, a amount of time. Oh, so you just... Are we getting married? Is this, what ha is, is this what's happening? No, but I can do that. Well, maybe some other time. I am ordained. Maybe, oh, well, you, you can't can marry, marry you yourself, can't marry yourself to somebody. can you? No, I'm, I took a vow to not marry you? people. Oh, boy. Are you ordained? Ordained and kicking ass. Ooh. I can marry you. I can kill somebody you don't want to marry. Okay, Perfect. well, kill pale. Okay. <laughs> See that. No. I can be helpful. He can be hurtful. He can be purple. No, don't do it. No. I, never... <laughs> no. I, I started saying in my head and I was like, I'm not going to do it. Oh, well. So, uh. To the boat? Yeah, sure. Let's go to the boat. It's good food, though. Yeah, it's Great a bacon. little early to go to the boat. It's still morning. Uh, well, we could go swim on the docks. What do you mean? Uh, actually. How cold is it currently? As you step outside, it is fall. You're heading towards harvest season, but it's it's very comfortable outside. You're a little bit far south, and you're heading farther south. Um, you're pretty comfortable outside right now. Swimming weather. Ooh. You know, this might not be such a bad idea. And I'm pretty sure this is the dread talking. I just want to get it over with. But, um, as somebody who's never swam before, it might be a good idea to try it once or twice, right? We get, we're going out in the open water. Well, it would be better to try it in a controlled environment. Yeah. Maybe that's a good idea. We'll just throw you out to the dock and just see that's what happens. That's an awful idea. I regret <laughs> it immediately. You know what's you know what is the best teacher experience in the moment. So, you know, you could get on that boat and just not know how to swim and then learn if you have to. Yeah, and then leave You've it up got to an excellent point. You. 
Yeah. I like I like Pell's idea better because uh yeah. Yeah. And then this is we why can you figure don't out know. figure out if you truly can sink or swim. Okay, so the plan is get out in the middle of the ocean and throw Ugbor into the water, right? Right. Okay, sweet. You can use me as an anchor. Okay. It will work. Well, if you want, I'd advise against it. But, you know, do you? I think I know CPR. <laughs> My medicine's a plus seven. I should know CPR. <laughs> so, you, I'm outside currently. What's around us? Um. Uh, well, were you guys? I assumed you guys were walking down to the dock and, and you know, walking and talking, or uh, what were you doing exactly? Yeah, yeah walking, walking and talking. Okay. Yeah. Um, there, the streets are pretty heavy with people right now. There's a lot of people moving in and about uh, from the docks uh, to the docks, uh, going in and out of town, in two different buildings, and out of different areas. Um, a lot of uh, wheelbarrows of things, like one, uh, two wheeled wheelbarrows uh, pulled from behind. And uh, single wheeled, some pulled by animals, larger carts, smaller carts, some people carrying baskets and things. A lot of stuff transiting back and forth. Some people were carrying documents and talking to another person walking beside them, going different places. Um, not not dense enough for it to be a problem with you just walking randomly. Um, but it is uh, it is a pretty busy morning this morning. Um, as you get closer to the docks, um, Ugbor, you take note that the docks seem to be right off of the the shore. So they, there couldn't be more than like two, three feet of water under the pier, right? Right. And as you as you get on the dock, you can see that most of the of the boats in the um, in the, in the parking spots for the boats in, in the in the docks, uh, most of them are gone. There is only uh, three left. One of them being the ship that you are headed towards, and it itself is being prepared heavily by the crew that has been withdrawn back to the boat. Um, some people are straightening up uh, sails and ropes. So a lot of uh, supplies are being loaded onto the boat. Um, trash and um, other things are being taken off the boat. People are uh, scrubbing the outside of the boat and you know, prying off some barnacles and things like this from outside and overall preparing the ship. And you guys are standing roughly at the docks. Wow. Things like a small city. Well, yeah, that's uh, precisely what it is. Hey, Pell, right. listen, um, are we going to go in the boat now, or... I mean, we're at the docks, we might as well. Okay, yeah, uh, um, you got any more of that long bottom leaf? Oh, I got a whole lot. Uh, Boar, real quick, um, you also notice, um, as, a, as a, a side item, that the boat is much lower now closer in level to the uh, the pier than it was before. Apparently the tide is now out and the boat is heavy with supplies, so it, it is um, only about a five a five foot uh, incline from the piers to the, the main deck of the ship. Feels like getting his Gandalf pop out. Can I, uh, can I jump in on that, guys? You got that fancy pipe, don't you, buddy? Ah, uh, yeah. Sure do. Right. Let's break it out. Have you ever smoked before of war? Never. Even uh, once. Uh, Try that pipe he's got. I'm going to hand it to him uh, cautiously. Okay. Uh, okay. So do I consume the pipe? Um, no, you do not. Actually... Um, so you're going to take what Pell has, and you're going to the left chamber. He, uh, Ugbor is following Samuel's instruction. Okay, so you're you're putting it in the left chamber, right? Yes. Okay, um, Samuel, do you have the description of that pipe handy by chance? Yes, I sure do. Can you remind me the um, layout of the inscriptions. There was, uh, there's three different types of engravings from left to right. How are they laid out? Do you remember? Yeah. Um, 
I remember that uh, one was electrocuted silver mm -hmm. design, a clockwise twisted handball, and the third is a wisp of smoke design. Mouthpiece made of ivory. Okay. I have. So ones. wood, dark light, and dark. Gotcha. And okay. So let me do this then. So at the bottom of the stalk, it divides into three portions, equal in width. Okay, so the uh, middle is the lightning bolts, the right is the uh, two hands cupping the bowl, and the left side is the leaf uh, design. Cool. Good to know. And you're putting the halfway leaf on the left side, right? Mm -hmm. yep. yep. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. All the okay. while, Pale's putting his gun off pop and putting a little bit in his... So simple. It's so beautiful. A simple man. <laughs> it suits your personality. Let me show you. He'll take out his tinder box and like strike it up and take a few puffs and then like make smoke rings and shit pop out. My eyes are just kind of widen. Mm-hmm. Uh, what are you doing? Experienced. Well, Go ahead and try, buddy. Okay. Ugbor looks <clears throat> looks up at the boat, back down to the pipe, back up at the boat one more time, and just as deep and and earth shatteringly long as he can, he just. Okay. So Ugbor, press the digitation to like a lot of things. Um, I believe so. Let me yeah, double check that. Pretty darn sure that's uh, one of the main things. I imagine, like, you know, those little sparkling ones. Yeah, dude. Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty much me, just like snapping my fingers. Sensory effect. Um, a shower of sparks is one of your yeah. sensory effects. Yep, it's totally possible there, no problem. But uh, you can chill warm flavor one f uh, food thing, make a color mark. Um, clean soil off of stuff, light or stuff out a candle. So you can you can you can just light something in, on fire. Yeah. Oh, okay. Awesome. Sweet. Okay. So that's how I'm gonna light mine when I, when I take it back to Mugbor. Okay. Well, um, first Ugbor, um, when you take your draw, you do uh, inhale, you know, pretty fiercely. At least okay. according, according to your own uh, your own regard for the item. Um, but even in that, the contents of the bowl just <laughs> instantly all becomes smoke and all of it goes straight in, into your lungs through the pipe. Um, I, I need you to make a con save for me, please. Okay. Oh, Jeez. I'll be straight back out. Okay. okay. I'll still be here. Uh, okay. Get back to the thing. Nine. Okay. Okay. Uh, you cough. It, it takes you by surprise, mainly. And you, you cough for a, a, a close to 20 seconds and, and write yourself. But you are uh, relaxed, and you are um, disadvantaged if someone were to charm you for the next uh, two, <laughs> two hours. And you have advantage on... Um, let me see what I'm going to call this here. Um, actually, no. I'm sorry. You have disadvantage on perception checks. So, <laughs> so, so, basically, you're, you're vulnerable to charm, and you have disadvantage on perception, <laughs> and 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 you are very relaxed, having uh, like, take taken an enti entire bowl in one hit. You're nice. just like, I, I love everybody, and I just can't see shit. Yeah. Are you feeling better, buddy? Feeling better about it? And when Samuel gets back, you know he, he will uh, take the pipe back and try to puff, but there's nothing left to puff. <laughs> about what? Is somebody upset? I, I feel fine. I'm ready to get on that boat. There's like, there's like a, a choking, like a, a hesitant. He's like, yeah, why not? It's gonna be fun, isn't it? Yeah. 
Imagine the dragons. Tales you'll be able to tell. Oh, it's gonna be great. Well, let's go, guys. Let's get on there. I'm gonna let, let's let old Sam hit his pop one time, then we'll go. Yeah, you're right. We should. Waiting is good. It's a long wait. You ever played rock, paper, scissors? Once or twice. Wanna play? Boulder parchment shears? Play what? <laughs> rock, paper, scissors. What's that? So, and then Pell will explain what rock, paper, scissors is. Because I, I don't feel like explaining it. Okay, okay. <clears throat> now, so, you know, there's three. Yeah. And one beats one, and, you know, the other beats the other. So there's, yeah, there's yeah, always going to be a loser. Um, um, what game is this for? Oh, wow. No, just it's called Rochambeau. <laughs> <laughs> I just heard rock, paper, scissors. Okay. Hey, uh, Samuel, did, uh, I'm assuming you didn't hear any of that? In... No, I, I... Okay, so did you guys not hear me say I'll be straight back? No, I, I heard that. I didn't... Okay, so I, I, can, just... I can still hear everything when I go through my house. I just can't speak through my headset. Cool, cool, yeah. Uh, I, hear, I heard everything. Yeah, so, so you take the pipe from Mug Boar and there is nothing left in it. Yeah, because it's, uh, yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, so, uh, Pell, can I try some of that? Yeah. No. I'm going to load the little, little chamber there. Little dibble. In the middle chamber, you say? Okay. Yes, sir. Sorry, I'm making my bearded dragon a, uh, salad currently. And my guinea pig's going nuts. Mm hmm <laughs> Bro, give me. Listen to. Can you hear it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I actually watched a video earlier today when uh, when this vet cleaning a guinea pig's ears and stuff like a teddy bear. Oh, oh man, Dude, I love guinea pig. Yeah. So you're taking a draw off the, off the pipe then? Yep. Off the middle. Okay. Uh, you inhale at uh, typical speed. You know, uh, not being a bore, and um, that it draws uh, as you expect it. But the uh, smoke is strong. It's like you've taken three or four hits, although the smoke has only depleted the, the, the usual amount. This is exactly what I was looking for. And I'll have you make it, make me a con save, please. <laughs> okay, hold on. Let me kill it. I'm going to get a microphone. <laughs> Right, you yeah, you, you take it, it relaxes you, no ill effects, you feel good. You feel good. Here, pal, I'd love for you to try this. Well, all right. And I'll hit the the right one since we're going in the right Oh, jeez. So, so you're filling and then lighting the one on the right? And... Yeah. Okay. Uh, you do so. Uh, with, with the there being... Okay, okay, so uh, you, you pack the right arm of the pipe, uh, you light it, and then you take a draw of the pipe. The pipe then draws from both the middle, still having been packed, uh -huh. and the right side. And both of, the, both of them draw down at normal speed, and the one uh, gives you a very strong essence of the leaf. And, but f from the right side... You, you can feel you can you can kind of taste the mixing and it's very smooth it it tastes um it, it's like drinking a mixed drink where you cannot taste the alcohol Ooh. and i'll have you make a con save as well please okay. nine um it it's a very smooth, pleasant hit, but you are at disadvantage to charm and uh, perception. But you you feel very smoky, fresh, and relaxed. All right, let's get on this boat. You look back to see that Ugbor has like wandered near to the. 
Yeah. Like examining his hands. And... <laughs> that was a pail running down the pier. <laughs> <laughs> Abor, come back! Huh? What? Come back! I'm getting. I'm. I want to get on the boat. Boat. Yeah, that's. Rod boat. You're right. Wow, man. Like they boat. really, uh, they really messed with him, huh? Boat. So, I so you would be the uh, more level-headed one out of us. I thought so too, Bo. <laughs> so, uh, who's taking the the lead as you walk onto the boat? Hmm? What'd you say? Oh, the lead. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Who's, who's what's the marching order as you march uh, across the gangplank to the boat? I'm gonna come behind everybody and <laughs> laugh at uh, Pale the entire time. He will like drag Ugbor up into the boat, then he'll like push yeah. him up up to the boat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All so, right, buddy, go okay. on. So Pell is pushing Ugbor up the gangplank. Yeah. Okay. Ugbor, make me make me a dexterity check with advantage since you're being helped by Pell. Okay. Okay, um, you start. You catch yourself, start to to get distracted, and then then look back at the gangplank and look forward ahead, knowing where you need to walk. You do not fall off the gangplank into the water, <laughs> and you make it onto the boat safely. As the four of you uh, reach the main deck of the boat, there are people running. Uh, not running. They're kind of like busy, like fast walking back and forth, trying to take care of their their own duties and things. And uh, you see the. Uh, the doors to the captain's cabin closed on the main deck, and there is a um, a, a, a Leonin with um, braids, a, a, a basically a lion person, if you don't know. And the the Leonin ha is uh, appears to be a male figure, very strong bodied, and his mane is braided into basically half dreadlocks, um, half uh, you know, flowing hair. And he's standing there in front of the captain's cabin doors with a uh, a piece of uh, a board that he has uh, paper in front of, and he's uh, writing some things down, flipping through it, taking uh, some sort of inventory, looking around, and uh, apparently checking off of a checklist. Oh, we did jack off. Sorry. Sorry. Good day, sir. Hey there. Uh, what can I do for you? Captain We'd like to get on the boat. Well, you you accomplished that quite handily. You're on the boat. <laughs> hey guys, we're like already here. We did it. Yeah. Uh, so, can I help you since you're on the boat? Yeah, is the captain around? Oh, uh, sure thing. He's uh, in a brief meeting. Uh, did you have a, a a scheduled appointment with him or something? Well, we was gonna figure out if he was gonna hire us for to guard the boat or not. Oh, you're on that list. Okay. Well, uh, yeah, no problem. You'll be next in line. Just give him a few, and uh, he'll be he'll be right with you. All right. Can we look around the boat? Uh, sure, but stick to the uh, to the main deck, please. I can't have people wandering in and out of the holds. No, you're fine. But my name's Lycan, by the way. Who are you? Lycan. My name's Pellinel. You can call me Pell. I will do Lycan. just that. Sorry, sir. I, I believe I cut you off there, my green friend. Ah, yeah. <clears throat> I was just giving you my name. My name's Lycan. That's that's easy to remember. Okay. Uh, what? There's two of you. Small world. Uh, he, he looks to uh, to Samuel. I'm nice. Samuel. Ah, it's been a pleasure, Samuel. And uh, you there? And Vork uh, states his name. Yeah, good to meet you. All right, uh, but yeah, uh, feel free to wander around. Uh, he'll be right with you. All right. So you've never been on a boat before. He'll like take you and just like walk you around. Look at this. This is what they call a mast. 
It looks like a tree. It used to be. What's Indeed. it for? It's like the way that it helps the boat move with that little that giant bed sheet right up there. Oh. The door opens to the captain's cabin, and uh, you see out step um, an elf, an elven woman, and uh, she uh, has a hushed finished to a conversation with the captain, the uh, Captain McLaren that you are familiar with. And Captain McLaren stepping out right behind her, um, she is dressed in what seem to be very uh, formal robes. They are uh, kind of a dark red and gold color, and uh, she's very well put together, uh, as well as he. He being more awake than the last time you saw him, he is in his formal ca uh, captain's gear, uh, a, a large coat that seems to be um, uh, oiled for wa oh, so, uh, tad waterproofness and these things, and he's wearing a tricorn, a, a brown tricorn on his head. And it's still visible is his beard with one tiny little braid in the bead in his beard. And uh, he's talking to her. They dismiss, and the oven woman walks uh, out past you, like and uh, gives her a gesture, and then she walks uh, down the gangplank. Okay, the uh, the captain will see you now. Just uh, his head walking in the door again. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry there, uh, friend. Uh, it's a little small for you. Watch your head. Uh, I do that a lot. Okay. And as you guys enter the captain's cabin, the doors are slowly uh, closed behind you. Uh, captain McLaren is sitting at his desk in the captain's cabin. In, in the captain's cabin, you see, once you enter there, um, right inside the door, uh, to your immediate left and right, there are two doors, a, uh, two closets of some kind. Beyond that is the main of the room that has windows um, behind the desk where he's sitting. And on the right side is a, um, is a bed for the captain. Um, it's kind of built into the wall. On the left side, there is uh, bookshelves. Um, they have a lot of them books in them that are uh, have like little straps across the individual shelves to keep the books from coming out should the ship veer one direction or another. And on the bottom below the bookshelves are chests. Uh, two, you know, there's only two chests on this side and one on the other, various uh, sizes. And those are also either appearingly bolted to the floor or the wall. Um, as you go in, you smell a slight air of, uh, of uh, uh, probably brandy or some sort of alcohol in the air. Very light, but it seems to have just uh, steeped its way into the wood. It just This is how the room smells. It smells of oak, alcohol, and uh, paper ink and uh, something, something of that nature. You, but you walk in, and Captain McLaren finally looks up to you as the doors close and says, Oh, uh, hey, uh, good to see you back. I have... Uh, I think we've uh, figured everything out we need to figure out. Um, just to get my, my head on straight, um, I'm looking at... Uh, he looks down to his paper next to him for a second. Uh, uh, Ugbor and Pell, uh, Samael and Vork. Is that right? Yes, sir. Yep. Okay. Um, he, kind of claps his, he claps his hands together and rubs them for a second. Well, um... Good news and not so good news. Um, I, w I would like to uh, thank you for your interest in the position. Um, I only have spots, though, for two at this time. Some things have come up, and uh, I will be hiring uh, two of you, specifically um, Ugbor and Pelinel, because uh, you guys are, frankly, the, uh, the stronger looking of the group, and I need some muscle on my ship at this point. Um, so I cannot hire all of you. Um, again, the position pays 10 gold for the trip. Uh, meals and lodging will be provided. All you need to do is help guard the ship and its contents from anybody or anything that would try to damage or steal or uh, harm those items in any way. Um, seeing as how you told me before you were a group, um, I will pay the, uh, the price for the job to Pell and Ugbor should you accept. Um, and the other, uh, the other two, Samuel and Vorek, no hard feelings, I hope. Um, you are welcome, welcome to uh, tend the ship uh, to maintain your your group. 
Um, you will not be paid, but you will not be responsible for anything uh, pertaining to that job. Um, I will give you free transit as long as you provide your own food, and I frankly don't have enough beds, so you will have to bed in the uh, lower hold with the cargo, if that is acceptable. I'll be completely honest with you, I didn't want to do shit anyways, so. Fair enough. Well, yeah, works great for me. <laughs> okay. So when do we get on the boat? Well, um, to be you're clear, you are you are on the boat. Yes, you are currently feet on on board. Yes, um, you are welcome to uh, stay and get. Can you help this man to uh, to do this for you, this you, this orc rather. Uh, <laughs> I'm a bit nervous. That's that's quite all right. I gathered. Uh, well, uh, an orc's place is typically not at sea, um, and I, I understand that. In my defense. If this is as bad as it gets, and I'm pretty sure this is as bad as it gets, right? Uh, this is going to be fine. I can totally deal with this. This oh this is okay. See, so you're already on the boat. You've done half the I battle. mean, this is a, uh, a large vessel. This is a 100-foot ship. Um, it, it doesn't rock that much, even even during a storm. So th th that shouldn't be too big of an issue if that's a uh, concern for you. Um, as far as dangers, there those uh, those are dangerous waters, boy. There are things out there. I don't hire guards for uh, you know for their for their looks. Literally puts his fingers up to the captain's lips like, shh, shh, shh. don't tell me about my nightmares. Yeah. Okay. okay, he is very confused and is immediately silenced. <laughs> Feel right. Okay, so uh, where do I sleep? Uh, you would uh, feel free to make yourself any, uh, comfortable in the uh, lowest hold with the cargo. Um, uh, we have everything itemized and uh, inspected. Um, so if you try to damage or take anything, I will know. But um, as, at the same time, uh, please make yourself as comfortable as you possibly can amongst boxes and uh, lumber. Um, but yes, you guys can uh, uh, wander the ship and uh, get comfortable with your surroundings if you like. Um, I, I will have uh, you two, and just your stud board pal, um, as well as two other guards that uh, came up that I have hired because of uh, independent reasons. Um, so you four right. will, be, will be sleeping in the uh, in the primary chambers with uh, Jonathan Lacken, Crops. And and the other two uh, guards, and the crew has their own uh, portions, and um, of course this is where I sleep, and uh, then there is the cargo hold beneath that. Um, but uh, feel free to uh, make your way around, introduce yourselves if you like. Um, we uh, you you are free to uh, go ahead and stay uh, for tonight in the uh, in your designated chambers we will leave first thing in the morning after a debrief with the entire crew i have a procedure that i like to follow and once i c complete my individual um, items then we will set sail you're not in charge uh, of in your positions with maintaining anything of the boat you don't have to worry about procedurally how to um, how to um, uh, set sail or drop anchor or anything like that. Uh, you just are here for the ride and for the muscle. So um, uh, make yourselves comfortable. Come and go as you please. But at dawn, we will sail. Hey, I'll tell oh. you this. Though. If shit hits the fan, I'm going to watch. I mean, you you are in charge of nobody but yourself. You're being paid uh, to, to take care of nobody but yourself. Hell right. yeah, well, uh, Flex the muscle and be like, uh, it's okay, I'm here. Indeed, you are. Okay. So, uh, officially, I. Nope. Uh, officially, I am to take it you accept these positions, Ugbor and Pilano. Why, oh, yeah. Wonderful. He takes his, the, the ledger that's in front of him and turns it around on the desk, takes a quill out of the ink. Okay, uh, he, uh, handing it to you. Um, I'll have to have you sign here, Ugbor, and here, Pell, uh, for your uh, acceptance of these positions and the terms with, therein. If you need me to go over anything else, I will happily reiterate any terms you may need. That'll be all right. 
Oh, and the uh, payment will be delivered upon completion of the job, um, also known as when we depart in Sunder. And that'll be five days from tomorrow? Approximately. Uh, we have several stops to make in the meantime. Um, I will go over the itinerary uh, tomorrow morning with everybody, but uh, yes, it should be approximately five days. All right. Well, let me go find these quarters that we're supposed to stay at. I'm going to go look over the, uh, the boat. Okay. The cargo. That's it. Yes. Okay. Well, you guys are on board the ship. Um, so you said you're going down to uh, to what areas to to investigate? Akbor's going to cargo, and I think Pell said he was going to go and check out our sleeping arrangements. I assume this spot right back here is the captain's place, right? Let me back my map up here. Um, yes, uh, just as, a, as an example here, let me get my soiter in the right place. Um, right here is the entrance to the captain's cabin, so underneath this area is where the, ca is where the captain's cabin actually is. Because this is the main deck, you come up from the from the side over here, and uh, these stairs lead up to what is known as the. Um, um, oh, poop! I had terms written down. Where they go? There it is. Um, this is the forecastle up here, where the um, where the um, ship is steered. Or do I? Nope. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm throwing it in the bit. Sorry. Yeah. Over here is cap captain's cabin, and this is the forecastle where the. Uh, where the um, where the boat is steered from, and over here is the quarter deck that also has doors entering it from this side, and there are stairs here and here that go uh, below deck. And like all these cannons are on here. They are. Sweet, that's cool. We're doing Sea of Thieves in D and D. Captain. Look! Okay. Um, yeah, so um, forgive me. Uh, say again where you're going. Pell's going to look at the quarters, you said? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, looking, uh, as soon as you go down below the uh, main deck down to the lower deck, um, this area has two um, two doors on it. One at one end of the ship and one at the other. The, the bow and the stern. And they are... Uh, appear to be um, closing off the areas for uh, where people sleep in. Uh, one is much larger than the other, and the whole rest of the other area in the center of the boat has uh, is lined with crates and barrels and ropes, ties, nets, and everything is uh, pulled tight and is secured down, uh, uh, apparently ready for sale. Going through one side of the uh, uh, one, uh, through one set of doors. On the northern side, the the uh, port side, is um, that's where m the uh, crew is. It has uh, approximately uh, 12 beds or so in there, and there are um, half of them. Some, some of them are bunk beds, some of them are not, but they are as tightly packed as they can be, giving everybody uh, enough space to to uh, live properly, but you being as efficient as possible. Um, on the other side, and, and, and the, sorry, and the crew's side is very minimalistic. There's uh, plain cottons, one foot locker on every bed, and um, bare walls. And uh, some of them have been set up and broken into. And uh, you can tell that some people have more or less moved in or are currently living here. Um, leaving that area, going to the other side of the boat, you open those doors, and there is a slightly more luxurious um, spacing to the beds, although still efficient. There is only um, seven beds in this area. None of them are double stacked uh, because of the, uh, the the spacing it is up to the the uh, the main deck because it does curve up a little bit. And in here, um, it's kind of stepped a little bit. And it on each step there is a set of beds. Uh, each bed has its own footlocker that's been nailed down as well as the beds to the the floor. And the beds here have slightly nicer sets of cotton to them. And uh, most of them are made. Some of them are lived in. And um, uh, 
in, in this room there is one window on each side of the room leading to outside where you can see the ocean and the piers on on the um, from from those windows uh, nothing dangling from the ceiling or anything it seems pretty plain but a little bit more well put together so there's nothing to like signify that it was like our room or anything though uh, no, he told you that one that uh, the crew was staying in one place, and the guards and other high officials are staying in the in the, in the secondary smaller place. So you're assuming that the nicer place is where you were staying, but you were oh, well. but, but you were not given any uh, designated bed or anything. Well, Hale will just put his stuff in like a little corner of the room, like there, nice and neat, right there. Dude. He'll go back up and try to find the others. And a born semio, what are you doing? I'm just sulking in the corner. Okay. Uh -oh. I ain't Ugg paid. <clears throat> Ugbor's going to uh, inspect, inspect the cargo that's been loaded onto the ship already. Okay, you have to go down through the main deck to the lower deck, and down again through another set of stairs in the same positions to the cargo hold. In the cargo hold, it is packed as tightly as it can be with supplies. There is barely enough room to walk in a, in uh, two aisles down the whole of the ship. Um, it is packed from top to bottom on both sides and in the center with crates, barrels, lumber, um, boxes, and just um, ropes, piles, everything you can, every type of uh, of material and transit trade item you you can think of. Is down here in some form or fashion. All right. Um, I'm going to do a while I'm walking up and down the aisles. I'm going to be sweeping specifically for the 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 black uh, chest, the black crate. Okay. Make me a perception check with disadvantage. Okay. Seventeen. Uh, you look pretty thoroughly through no, everything. No, that's dexterity. That's oh, dexterity. that is correct. Okay, eleven perception. You look. Um, you look pretty well through all the items down here. You can't get to everything. It's it is tied up and ready to go. Um, you don't see anything that stands out to you matching the description of what you've been told. Okay. Um, if everything looks to be in order and nothing appears to be amiss, I'm gonna return back up top. Okay. Yeah, all we find each other back again on the main deck of the ship. Uh, Pell and Ugbor kind of uh, uh, sequence each other up the stairs, finding Samael and Vork on on the uh, top side of the boat. Uh, the day is still relatively young. It's not quite noon yet. What are you guys going to do? guys ever played castles and cattles? Castles and cattles? Yeah, you like, you know, you just, you imagine yourself in like a different world and you know, you just talk and you imagine these different scenarios. It's like a little game you play. How do you win? You don't. You just. This is a have, terrible game. You have fun with your friends and you have a good time. You can't have fun without winning. Somebody's got to win. No. Like, everything isn't a competition. I win. No. no. You win. <laughs> there was no game. <laughs> 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 I 
I, I love the desperate, but no. <laughs> no. So a after a uh, while of uh, sitting around and talking, maybe trying mm -hmm. to come up with something to do or uh, waste some time, it gets towards the evening, and as evening kind of settles in, um, so there's been a lot of people coming and going from the boat, so it's kind of become a numb, numb uh, occurrence to you. But uh, two people approach at different times uh, that catch your eye. First being the elven lady um, that you saw from before, who, who had Captain McLaren's attention before you did. And she is coming uh, onto the ship and has a series of packages with her. She is carrying a large backpack that has uh, been fastened together to carry items. It's a, a transient backpack full of either trade items or something of that nature. Um, and something under her arm wrapped in a um, wrapped in a blanket and another arm that carries uh, what you assume to be your personal backpack. Um, she walks on still wearing the same dark red and golden cl uh, cloak her hair blonde and tied into a, a braid and she walks onto the ship and kind of ignores you and walks down into the uh, lower lower deck after she walks on a few uh, almost an hour passes and uh, with much less in hand the uh, tabaxi winter moon walks onto the ship her same large feathered hat and glasses um, and just her her belt full of daggers and the same apparel she had before uh, with just a small little bag on her back walks onto the ship looks at you gives you kind of a glance looks uh, Pelinel, Samuel, Agbor, Vorik the up and down for a second walking slowly and then walks also below deck if anybody just stares at Pell, he'll just wave at him like a baby. <laughs> Hello. Um, if doing that, if you uh, doing that, uh, Winter Mood would kind of give a uh, a half-hearted chuckle at you and a slight smile, and then keep walking and go down. She can throw darts real good. Doesn't my <clears throat> okay? So doesn't my uh, what kind of elf am I again? What is he? What is he called? Uh, do not recall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so don't they have like moves like seasons and stuff? Um, you tell me. I'm not familiar with that type. We can certainly figure that out. But I don't know off the top of my head. No, yeah, I'm, they're. I mean, I've never played one before. So I'm kind of... They're super moody. Uh. They have like four different, uh, let's see. I know they have like different seasons and shit. Like they can be like either summer, winter, yeah. autumn, or spring. Um, personality. Yeah. He has a personality? Yeah, it's like a personality trait for him. In their spring state, they're joyful and playful. In their summer state, they they become aggressive, vindictive, and furious. In autumn, they're more compassionate and ready to help others and alleviate their suffering. In their winter state, they become bitter and pensive. They often cried frozen tears and irradi irradiated a feeling of gloom that could be felt like cold winds. Wow, that's a bit much. So is Samuel Sam Sam one of period or no? <laughs> what? So, so is Samuel on his period or no? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I have been. <clears throat> you look a little gloom there, buddy. Well, you got hired, didn't you? Well. He said he needed some strong men. You got a free rod, though. Yeah. Yes, you're right. Oh, well. This we can play rock, paper, scissors. We can. We can try that. Castles and cattles. 
I don't know. Apparently, <clears throat> we have an ultra competitive orc in our midst. <laughs> he just—he's got to learn. Where? <laughs> Where is he? <laughs> of course he can't. Oh my goodness! Calm down. Oh, guys, real quick, I'm sending something to the uh, group chat. Um, I designed this in um, SketchUp and 3D printed it. It's a little spell spell slot tracker that you can use with 12 uh, millimeter dice. And it cost me, I had, to, I had to work on the design. The font is not as big or as thick as it needs to be to be properly printed. But um, but, but, yeah, but you, you can use that to keep track of how many spell slots you have left on different things. When you're out, when you're out of spells, you just take the dice out and... I can make I, I can make that for for basically next to nothing once I get it figured out and I'll give you guys some. Uh, great. Oh, you need medicine, baby. Okay, you go right ahead. Okay, give me one second, guys. All right. I love you, sweetie pie. Mm-hmm. Everything went hard from chatting. I don't think you've seen anything in the group chat for a bit. I said yes. I don't expect him on until 11 30 or 12 at least. <laughs> I wish I had found this personality traits table on Half Orcs before I made my character. Let me let me send this one. Love you guys. For having fun. Guys, about your new thing you made? Yeah, just, just now. Mm -hmm. too. Don't be up too early, right? I feel better when you're when you're full. Of course, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the fucking alphabet. Okay. Rat queens. I had to give baby some medicine and stuff. Uh, by the way, this is the 12 milli millimeter dice for later. If you guys need them, it's the small box that has a lot of them. I have one of those somewhere. But yeah, it's, it's those guys. Anyway, so that's, that's fine. Um, yeah, after a uh, short while of uh, spending the rest of the evening on deck, uh, maybe taking a break to, take, to eat some food or relax or something, you, um, you then uh, realize that it's getting close to night and you have to decide what you're doing as far as betting. I'm going to go down that one fancy room. Okay. Well, mate, so, like, Gore follow me, then I'll be like, come here, Gore, let me show you. I don't really need a bed. No, okay. Yeah, you're going to go uh, sleep with the cargo. Good <clears> thing <throat> it's literally full of the brim. Well, I, I can just kind of go into a trance. And... Just go behind a door. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't care. Just close Give me a pillow real quick. You put it on so my I'm knees. Be undisturbed. Okay, uh, Agbor, what are you doing? Uh, Agbor listens to Pell, follows right along. We go into the fancier looking place. Uh, are we the oh, first ones in here? Um, as you, Agbor, and Pell enter your, um, your area, your, uh, your your bed, more or less your bedroom for the time, um, you see that there are uh, three individuals already in the room. Both uh, Wintermoon and the elf are in the room. And another um, that you don't know yet, a half-elf, who is very fair of face, um, hair uh, a dark brown down to his, uh, down to his shoulders. Uh, he is also in his bed and he is uh, meditating. The other two are uh, um, up and doing their own different things. The elf is reading a book, and uh, Wintermoon is uh, flipping through a paper of her own while, flitt while twiddling a, a dagger in her hands. Ugbor throws his pack near, near where Pels was. Pell will lock Mosey over to a little bit. Give me one time. I'm like writing notes down real quick. Mm hmm. Take your time.
after a few minutes of silence of you guys getting your uh, bearings and getting set up with your stuff, getting everything uh, where you comfortably want it, um, maybe leaving out a water skin to drink from in the night or something like that, um, the uh, half-elf with the dark hair pipes up. Um, greetings, everyone. I think it would be uh, probably very efficient, since we're mostly here, um, to introduce ourselves. You four have been hired to defend the ship and its contents. Um, I have uh, knowledge that uh, it is uh, Ugbor, Pelinel, um, Wintermoon, and Helianaka. Um, I think it would be uh, probably, like I said, efficient for you guys to introduce yourselves and come to know each other. You will be spending the next five days with each other just to not necessarily strategize, but at least get to know each other's strengths and weaknesses and uh, at least have someone to talk to, perhaps. Uh, my name is uh, Jonathan Rose. I am the uh, first mate to Mr. McLaren. Um, I handle most affairs on here that um, that spill over from Mr. McLaren's plate, but I'll be happy to assist in any way that I can. All right. Well, I am Hell. Uh, this is Ugbor. I just met him the other day. I'm good at hitting stuff. Um, the elf speaks up first. Um, hello, I am Helianaka. I am here on special contract, but I am uh, slightly skilled with the bow. How the hell do you spell that? Um, H-E-L-I-A-N-A-K-A. I didn't say that in real. <laughs> <laughs> uh, why not? Why not? Um, so, I kind of know you, and you'll put a point over at Winter Moon. You can throw darts real good. Yes, I'm very good at, uh, at throwing darts. I'm also good at throwing daggers and knives and swords. Uh, anything pointy, really. Crowbars, fire pokers. Those glasses are magical, aren't they? Hold that thought for one second, sorry. Okay. I was to run a the game's lagging. Those glasses are magical, aren't they? Latency in this game is shit. <laughs> Still got bugs in it. He raised himself, but he's okay. No, there's there's my blood. Or land on his ankle wrong or something, but he's fine. He always does that, which which doesn't touch that area because it's. Uh, hello, hello, hello. It's fine. Hola. I know. He's fine. Okay. Thank you. I just looked for it. I ended wrong. Right. Love you guys. You okay? You good. No problem, baby. Okay, sorry about that. Dog yelped and I had to help with something. Um, so what were we saying after spell, uh, spelling the name? Uh, we were talking to Winter Moon, and I said something about her glasses being magical. Oh, yes. Maybe they are, maybe they're not. No, they are. Yeah, maybe they are. Hell usually doesn't lie about this kind of thing, trust me. I've known him for about two days. Is it a sin? Is it a sin in your God's book to use a magical aid? No. I was just saying, it, it helps us all to know, don't it? Yes. Well. Sure. I have. I have some assistance. Yes. So I can. 
I know quite a few little things I can do. Uh, if we specifically need to protect that little box, I can put it in a hut. With the little box. Yeah, hell. What little box? Oh. The cargo. We're protecting you know. the cargo. The car yeah, the cargo. I can protect everything though. When, uh, when Winter Moon's eyes narrow at you, make a deception check, pal. Oh, fuck. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. Okay, good to know. Yes, boxes. cargo boxes. Of course. Yes, yes. And if uh, Pell has any trouble defending the cargo boxes, uh, I, I can certainly help by literally ripping whoever's trying to get in them <laughs> in half. Hmm. Not unuseful. Not unuseful. Well, uh, I am, as you say, an early riser, so if you, um, if you snore, please kindly fuck off and she lays down and, and turns over wow okay Bugbore immediately face plants onto the floor where he's standing so that was rude the elf uh, the elf says you know it is uh, quite late I think I will turn in as well good night everyone after being that much of a bitch, I'd probably mm -hmm. turn into. <laughs> <laughs> Samael, you're not in the room. You are um, in the cargo hold at this point, yeah? I was assuming I was in this room with these guys. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, you could if, if you wanted to. Then... Yeah, I'm just, I'm just kind of following them around. <laughs> okay. I have nothing better to do. I'm just kind of... Salty. <clears throat> Hey, um, well, uh, Ugbor, you are on the floor, face planted down? Yes. Why? I'm going to bed. <laughs> Why? Uh, do I snore? <laughs> Roll a constitution check. And uh, also... Longer with disadvantage, right? Because I'm, I'm sure by the end of the day... The yeah, the, the disadvantage is, is waned. So, uh, you guys going to sleep? Besides, your disadvantage was on perception, not constitution. Yeah, you're right. You're right. These are facts. So is it, this is a check? Yep, just a constitution check. No, it's a saving throw. Save yourself from being from snoring. Uh, oh, no, the, no, no, the um, you you when you go to sleep, I'm glad you, I didn't. you are. Uh, <laughs> You are um, very tired after everything that has transpired in your uh, personal psychological landscape in the last uh, day, and you uh, pass out um, pretty hard and do not snore. Nice. <clears throat> well, so guys, I'm going to go meditate. <laughs> Vork uh, comes with you, uh, quietly behind you. Semyon, he follows you down to the cargo hold. I'm Vork, that I mean, most are. Wow. Aren't you an L? Yeah, I mean, tr yeah, true. Okay, well, true, true. I can see it. I mean, let's, let's, let's call a spade a spade. Real, right? <laughs> so I guess that makes me a bitch. Amen. A green bitch, okay. Well, she was an extra bitch. Look like with a cherry on top. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's like a fucking... Man, poisonous, this lady said three mushrooms. words and got so deep into Samael's skin. <laughs> yeah, I don't mind. So, um, uh, in in the cargo hold, you see, uh, t you know, just lumber t uh, timbers secured up against uh, one wall, and most of that that takes up most of the space from bottom to top, in the center and the far wall along, as well as wrapping along the edges on uh, the sides that it can, is just crates, barrels, boxes, um, 
fletchings, just uh, everything is just packed in tight and then locked down. You, you, the, spa the space that you have access to is uh, maybe a, a little bit of space on top of everything on the flat. If you were to climb up, you can lay flat between the crates and the roof of this room, or the ceiling of this room. Uh, and there's also the this, the two aisles, left and right, that go up and down the entire uh, length of the ship in this area, besides the stairs that go up. You straight back. I need some bathroom. Mm -hmm. uh, Vork is going to, to decide to make his bed um, below the stairs um, on the back side, as close as he can to them. Um, a, a little bit out of the way, but where he can see everything. As, as much as you can from this perspective. Uh, Pill, well, uh, what are you doing? Since the board's Pill. asleep and everybody else is more or less asleep in your area. Uh, Pill will try. Is there like any windows in that room? Um, in your room, yes, there is a window on the left side of the room and right side of the room towards the towards the bow, or, or rather stern. There? Sorry. Um, yeah, there's uh, beds all across. If you were to get a bed close to it, it would be um, just off the side of your bed, of, of one of the beds there. All right, he's going to look out the window. Is the moon out? Um, the moon is uh, very slightly over the horizon of the water. Well, I will uh, say a little prayer to the moon and then go to bed. Okay. Easy enough. We'll wait for a second for Samuel to get back. Guys, I know it's been a minute since uh, since our last game because the holidays and everything, but this is this is fun. I'm enjoying myself. I'm enjoying myself too. Just as a side note, I don't expect this to come to anything because this guy is really flaky. But um, I have a friend who might want to pop in for a session or two, maybe as a little pop in character because he's getting he's he's new to the hobby. Oh, okay. Um, this will kind of gauge how you guys feel about that. Yeah, do it for sure. Okay. You know, it probably, it probably won't happen, but just in, in case he decides to take a sip on the offer. The more, the merrier. Uh, any uh, any notes, questions I can answer real quick? Anything you didn't catch or want to want to get clarified? Yeah, what's the name of the ship? The name of the ship is the um, uh, Dream Dairy. Dr yes, D R O M E D A R Y. What was the second D from the second D? D R O M E D A R Y. D A R Y. That's good. And the captain's name was. Um, the captain's name was Briar McLaren. B R I. Yeah, B R I A R M C C L A I R N. So I noticed that um, that Lycan character, mm -hmm. he's not in the room with us, is he? Not yet, no. Okay. There is an empty bed, and you can make assumptions. Right. <coughs> oh, what's up, guys? Okay, you back? All right. Good. Yeah, um... The dromedary is a camel. A like creature. Hmm. I just wanted to tell you guys that I heard you talking about the shit, man. <laughs> um, in the morning, you guys wake, uh, all finding a decent amount of rest. Um, Pelinugbor 
uh, when you wake, you see that um, despite not, not he knowing he came to bed at some point, um, Lycan is in the room with you, but you all wake to the loud ring of a bell, just ding, 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 ding. Uh, somebody, somebody is shouting on, uh, from the top, all hands on deck, all hands on deck. And everybody's relatively quickly you know, gets up, shakes her face, wipes her face off, stand, stands up and goes up to the top, to the top deck. You know I wasn't on mute, I'm sitting there like fucking <laughs> destroying you guys' ears. That's fine. Okay, what do you guys do? Run up there? Yeah, I think so. Thor brushes Kay. himself off, runs upstairs. Somebody yeah, else? Walking up. Huh, fuck. Yeah, I'm gonna go with them, I guess. Alright. Uh, coming up to top side on main deck, you see um, a large crew of about um, we count one, two, three. yeah, about fifteen crew plus your uh, your other cabin that you guys had and the captain, all on deck. The captain uh, is standing on the um, the uh, forecastle, and uh, alongside him, the uh, the the gentleman named Lycan takes his place right beside him, as well as um, Jonathan Rose that you know, and another that you haven't seen yet. Um, he is a wizard folk um, that's dressed in pale uh, brown clothes. Um, all four of them are standing at the top of the um, of the top of the forecastle. Everybody else, all the crew, and all you um, guards, more or less are on the main deck, and everybody is standing around basically at attention, no real pattern to to uh, to standing, but uh, everybody is looking in that direction. Good morning, good morning. Okay, this is the Captain, uh, Captain McLaren speaking. Um, so, we are setting sail today for Sunder. Uh, I want to go over the itinerary and some introductions for everybody. Um, the four people on the bridge you see here are myself, your captain, Brian McLaren, your quartermaster, Lycan. He gestures towards Lycan, who takes a, a short little bow. Uh, my first mate, Jonathan Rose. And he gestures towards Jonathan, who, uh, who even though just waking up, his hair is slicked back and, and suave beyond you what it deserves to be. And he also takes a, a deeper bow. And this is your chef, Crops. And Crops just nods his head with his hands behind his back. Did you say Jonathan Rose? Jonathan Rose. Gotcha. Uh, we are what you would call superiors. Not everybody reports to everybody in uh, a direct fashion, but we are of the notion that somebody reports to all of us. Most of the crew in here is familiar with us and uh, everybody's position. Everybody knows your place. Um, if you have an issue with uh, anything regarding to the crew's operation, any crew-like supplies, any materials needed for repairs, you get with the quartermaster. Any administrative uh, affairs you need to uh, take hold, you can deal with me or my first mate, Lacken, uh, first mate Jonathan, as needed. Um, and Crops is the most important man on the ship. He is our chef. He is the one who feeds us uh, most of what you eat. Of course, you can keep your own little snacks and rations uh, on deck, but, but food will be provided, as is typical. We uh, will be using mostly uh, uh, biscuits and fresh uh, fish and fruit as much as possible, but we have what we have. For the itinerary, and as, as he's talking, he's walking back and forth across the, uh, the, the forecastle. There are 20 or so of us in total. Uh, we are headed first to the Rose Coral Reef just outside of the, uh, the Gulf. At the reef, we will, uh, take a rest and we will gather some fish for our gentleman crops and he will, uh, prepare the fish for the journey and for our dinner that night as well, presuming we have a good catch. Um... After our stop at the reef, we are headed to Port Eli to do some exchanges of supplies, and some of our crew need to be swapped. Um, that will be some of their final destinations. We will hire some more people. It is This happens at every port. Most of you are familiar with this. 
After uh, Port Eli, we are headed our long haul to South Sunder, where we will make our large drop of most of our supplies, gather more supplies, and keep going. The ship goes back and forth on its business, and this is how we operate the ship. Uh, I, I've introduced you to everybody that you need to know. You can introduce yourselves to each other on your own time. I encourage you to do so, but don't waste our time. You have jobs to do, and you know them. You get paid for your job and nothing else, and you will get paid for your job and nothing else. And if you fail at your job, you will not get paid. Is that clear? And, and like three quarters of, of the crew say, yes, Captain! And I just yell in the background, I'm not getting paid. <laughs> we eat thrice a day in shifts. Food will be prepared constantly by Mr. Crops. You will get your portions as is prepared. Uh, I will need one guard to stay on active watch at all times. Uh, the three others will remain on call if needed. These waters are dangerous almost as much as what's in them. Keep your head on a swivel. Rogue waves, storms, anything else that might be a danger, keep your eyes out. Let no surprises take hold of you. And we should fare a lot better than we would otherwise. There will be a stop for those of you unfamiliar, just outside of Sunder, to um, oh, quick, quick showing of hands. Who is not familiar with Sunder? Uh, raises his hand. About three, raises his hand. three or four, three or four crew, and you three raise your hands. And he takes note and nods. Uh, Sunder has a, a a naval barrier outside of the island. About 50 miles or so out, every ship coming and going checks in or out with this force. This is purely an administrative check. Nothing for you to worry about. Uh, high level regard between the trade master of Sunder and the uh, imports and exports going in and out. Nothing uh, to be concerned about. I will handle the transaction and interactions when that time comes, but it will be coming so you know. Um, I don't think there's anything I've missed. If there is, we will cover it on a point-by-point -point basis. We leave in 10, take your positions. And he claps and kind of breaks the group and everybody, you, especially the crew, uh, then turns and walks carefully off to their uh, different positions, some dropping sail, some pulling anchor, uh, fastening ropes, doing uh, certain, doing a bunch of different things to get the ship ready to sail. What are you? Uh, Phil, will, mm -hmm. Phil will go up to the captain and be like, if you need an active guard, I'll, I can do it. All right, Pell Valentos for first guard. That's wonderful. Take watch. You can take watch up in the crow's nest if you like. If not, you can be on deck. The first portion of this journey is quite uh, quiet, usually. Interesting choice of words. Okay. What are the other two of you doing? I'm going back down to where I belong, my friend. Okay. Back into the dark bottom. Agbor? Oh boy. I was muted. Um, ah. So, um, what, what, what was the question? What are you doing? Oh, um, let's see. Somebody needs to be watching the cargo at all times, at least one person. Uh, did anybody from our group start into the cargo hold? Um, Samael is down there. Uh, Vorik is not. Vorik um, is walking about the upper deck of the ship. Okay. Since neither Samael nor Vorik are being paid to watch the cargo, I'll uh, take a gander myself. Okay. Fair enough. Are, are you choosing to just hang out down there for now? Yeah, for now. Okay. And Pell, where are you guarding the ship from? Uh, <clears throat> Pell will look up at the crow's nest. Look down at himself and look back up at the crow's nest. 
Be like, well, I guess I can look more up there, and he'll just start clambering his big ass up the ropes. Okay. Um, easy enough to get to. The ropes are designed for this. Uh, it takes you about uh, a minute or two to get to the very top, and once you get into the crow's nest, it's quiet up here. Windy. There's a few gulls that are taking a roost on uh, some of the upper sails. You get a very nice view of the entire port of Bayside, the docks, out into the ocean. Um, it's very quiet and peaceful up here. You don't hear nearly as many sounds of people or uh, boxes being moved around. No talking, just the waves, the gulls, the breeze blowing through your ears, and a view of everything. Nice. After uh, a can't do. Oh, I, I didn't know what that meant. Um, after uh, just just a few minutes, um, you hear another ringing of the bell. Ding ding. Distant to you, Helena. It's um, you, you aren't looking super high up in the air, but the the bell is muted compared to what it was to you before, and. There's some brief discussion with the people who are on deck, and sudden you know, very uh, suddenly but not noticeably, the ship begins to drift forward. The sails fill with air. Uh, there are some paddles to push off of the the uh, near, the uh, shallow waters, and the boat moves forward slowly out of the bay from Bayside out into the open water. It's a very quiet journey at first. The waves are very low. The sky is very clear. Just a couple of clouds here and there that uh, pass over to block the sun. It uh, takes you uh, not long to get lost in the in the piece of it, Pell. Even uh, even to kind of start dreaming and thinking about your goddess and what she has asked of you. And you look and see that it is uh, in the sky off to the east. There is, it's, it's doing this thing where even though it's daylight, you can still see the moon in the sky very faintly because of the orbit. You take appreciation in that. Nice. Ugbor and Samael being below deck, um, you don't feel much. You don't feel anything really. Um, as far as you know, you haven't moved. It might unnerve you for a, for a little bit, but you did hear the bell earlier, and you get the notion that after some time, the ship would have been moving, so you assume that bell was the call for the crew to get on the uh, on the, the forward momentum. But you don't feel anything. It's as if you are on dry land aboard. The, shift, the ship does not shift in any way. The cargo remains undisturbed, some uh, ropes, you can hear them creak by tightening and then loosen back up. Um, nothing shifts very much down there. Samael is uh, meditating in his own corner, and you don't see anything out of sorts. All right. Um, if I, if this time I investigated. Uh, I wonder what my odds would be on finding that crate. Being that this is an investigation in the same area, and you're doing it um, a little bit more clear of head, go ahead and, and, and roll me an investigation check with advantage. Okay. 21. Critical. Okay, um... You look very intently this time, taking your time. There's nobody around to bother you. Your job is to watch this cargo. So if anybody were to uh, ask you, there would be no uh, no lying or no any kind of deceit you have to worry about there. You're in, you're looking at everything, the logs, uh, even shifting around some boxes and moving, prying some apart to look, look down between them and let them fall back into place. You look underneath cloths, and uh, move tarps, shift ropes, look around. You do not see the box in this cargo, in this ship. All right, and 
what time would you say it was about now? Right now it is just after daybreak. We'll say roughly um, eight o'clock. Okay. Um, well, let's see. Is Samael and Vorik, are they both down here with me? Samael is. Vorik is not. Okay. I'm actually going to run and talk to Samael about that, about my findings just there. Samael. Hey, are you there? Mm -hmm. Yes, what? Look, dude. I just really went through this cargo, and there is nothing that looks even remotely like what we were told to keep an eye on. Okay, so uh, what, what exactly were you told to keep an eye on? Well, uh, according to the letter that Pell has, uh, yeah. we're, he, we're supposed to ensure that a small <laughs> black crate about a foot long um, is actually delivered to someplace in Sunder. And there is no small black crate anywhere in this cargo. Hmm. Is there anywhere else? Do they, do they keep any... Like, is there any cargo anywhere else in the ship? Well, you know, now that you mention it, uh, there are crates scattered around, and I know for sure in the captain's quarters there were a couple chests. <clears throat> I assume those were personal belongings, but I mean, it's possible that any high valuable materials, they might be up there. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go let Pell Pell know as well and see what he thinks. Yeah, good idea. I'm going to continue to meditate. Right, Borg, you get on top of deck. You uh, you pass through the uh, lower deck. Some crew are in there taking inventory. They're preparing. Um, a couple of us seem to be preparing charges for the for the cannons. Others are uh, assuring that everything is is tied down. Some are actually just relaxing because not everybody needs to be doing everything at the at this time. Um, you, you go to the upper deck. There's some crew who are tightening ropes, checking everything. Um, at the uh, the bridge of the ship, um, Captain McLaren and um, Jonathan Rose are up there at the uh, the helm, and Jonathan appears to be giving some navigation, and uh, Captain is uh, steering the ship. You don't you look around, you see Vorik is actually at the bow of the ship, kind of leaned over, um, like. Titanic style, but just laying uh, face face first on the uh, on on the the front of the ship, and his chin is just resting on his hands, and he's looking straight ahead. You don't see hell anywhere. I approach Boric and kick the back of his boot, making uh, uh, specifically, purposely not looking out over beyond the boat. Like, I'm ignoring the fact that we are on moving water. Vork looks back and sees it's you and just kind of gives you a, hmm. Have you seen Pell? Uh, I have not. Um, I guess he's on guard, yeah? Right? Yeah. Um, and then I kind of crouch down, and I look over my shoulder, and I whisper to him, I don't think that package is here. It's not. It's not below deck. It's got to be somewhere here, right? That's what we were told. Yeah, I mean... I wonder where, though. I don't... Hmm. Heck, maybe somewhere, you know, stood tight or secret or something. And we'll, you know, I mean, we're, we're not here to rob the thing. We're here to see where it's going to go. So maybe when we get to Sunder, we'll see it unloaded or something. Maybe. Maybe. You're probably right. I'm probably overthinking it. I wonder where Pell is off to. Because he wasn't downstairs. I just hear faint whistling. <laughs> what is that? Is that a bird? <laughs> I mean, you, 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 you do also hear gulls. 
Yeah, well, you're at, well, you're at sea, just just out, out, just outside the bay. Fair enough. Fair enough. It, we'll, we'll say that it takes you um, a few minutes, but you do eventually, you know, by process of elimination, figure out <laughs> the Pell is not on you below deck, lower deck, main deck. And your eyes look around and, and see that there is a crow's nest up there. You don't see him up there, but there is a platform on, you know, close to the top of the the main mast. Hmm. Well, he has to come down sooner or later. I'm going to go back to, uh, well, where we sleep and essentially tag out with, uh, with somebody to go and watch the cargo. You get to the uh, the guards' quarters, and you see uh, Lycan in the uh, in the guards' quarters and Silvermoon. I'm sorry, in, in Wintermoon. Okay. Um, hey guys, uh, I've been watching the cargo for a while. Any of you guys wanna take a spin at staring at those boxes? <laughs> well. Uh... I'm not really uh, paid to do that. Uh, that's kind of your guys' job. Uh, Miss uh, Miss Winter, you could do that if you wanted to. She says, uh, fine, I'll go prowl the area for a while, I suppose. And she stands up and uh, yeah, walks out of the room. It's just now you and, um, and Lycan in the room. So, Lycan... Uh, yeah. You, uh, you've been sailing long? Yeah, he, he's laying flat on his back on his bed. He's, he has a book above his head with his thumb, thumb and a page, and he, bring, he come with his arm fall to the side, keeping he been keeping hold of his book. It's been a while. I've made most of my living on the water. Really? Yeah. What would you, what would you, would, would, would you say there are anything in particular that you do if, uh, well, really, just the thought of water in general kind of made you want to throw up. No, uh, the water is great. The water is, um, it's free flowing. It supplies everything. It's everywhere. It provides life to a lot of things, even though a lot of things in the ocean are dangerous to us. But uh, it's open, it's free, and it's it's simple. You, you know what your job is. You do your job, you get paid. And it's something I find very peaceful. I see. You've uh, been working for McLaren for very long. Oh, he's the he's the third captain I worked under. Um, he's a, he's pretty fair of a guy, I think. I've been with him for uh, a couple of years now. Wow. So you guys are kind of on a first name basis, huh? I mean, you kind of have to be. There ain't much use for, uh, you know secrecy or any kind of uh any kind of uh indecent things when you're stuck in the middle of the ocean with somebody you you kind of rely on i mean we, we all rely on each other out here if there's a fire on the boat we got to put it out or we are all gone if something attacks us then they're attacking us they're not attacking an individual person usually so we're all in it together and you kind of have to trust each other with your lives to a certain extent so uh there, there's a level of trust you have to have Have you ever dealt with any kind of seedy trips, seedy adventures, any mutinies, anything? No mutinies. Yet to, to quell. No mutinies or anything. No. Um, most of, most stuff like that is uh, very uh, overstated and dramatized. I mean, we're, uh, unless you're a pirate or something, most things just kind of go. You know, amicably, if you don't like your captain, you wait till the next place you can get off, and then you get off. You might flip them off and break some stuff on the way out, but, you know, that's that's your own regard. But, uh, but no, most things you just, if you don't like each other, you turn around and walk away. Mm, now, gr granted, you know, Sunder being what Sunder is, uh, there is uh, a fair bit of seediness down there. It It is the seed, if you will. But, uh, <laughs> But yeah, nothing, nothing crazy. Hey, listen, weren't you uh, walking around with um, some kind of 
I don't know, some some paper you were inscribing something. What was that? Uh, I do a lot of stuff like that. When were you talking? Oh, it was um, it was yesterday as the cargo was being loaded on the ship. Oh yeah, simple. We were just taking inventory, making sure we're ready to go. We had a lot of uh, a lot of cargo. We're shipping out a bunch of lumber for Port Eli and some other supplies. A lot of a lot of uh, things going to sunder. We just got to make sure everything is on there and account for. If it's not delivered, then we get hold accountable for it. Got to pay for it, and you know that kind of thing. Just important to double check everything, make sure it's there, make sure that we got enough food to feed everybody. Absolutely. Which say hey, that's that's part of the thing. Um, when we get to the the reef, uh, I'm not sure. Um, well, it wouldn't really matter. I was going to say if you're much of a fisherman, but it wouldn't matter because we, we only have so many rods and nets and stuff. But uh, I'm not sure how much you are for fish, but we always wait till we get out there and uh, do some good fish catching because uh, that's good fresh food and it's free. It saves us a lot of money and it's a lot of good food for people. Yeah, uh, you know, me and water specifically, we don't really... We kind of hate each other, you know what I mean? Like, I'm okay with water. But if I saw it in a back alley, I'd probably stab it to death. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, you're in an opposition here, Ben, buddy. Yeah. So, I have some questions. Um, we're, well, Pell and I were hired to essentially keep guard of the cargo, as you know, and um, is there going to be any additional uh, cargo that we pick up along the way? We were picking up in Port Eli. Um, not sure what exactly the captain has the manifest on that, but uh, we have most everything here. Just some uh, small trade over there, I think. Uh, yeah, you mentioned you just now mentioned the manifest and the ledger. Um, mm -hmm. that you were working on the inventory uh, is that is that something that I would be allowed to look at uh, that's the negatory good buddy that's purely for the captain's eyes administration I see I see so there's like nothing at all that would earn me that right I mean if you have a good reason for it maybe you can talk to Jonathan or McLaren but I mean that'd be the extent of it it's, okay. a, it's up to him it's his business yeah <laughs> I mean, this whole ship is his business, and he kind of pats the side of the wall. Anything that goes on here is under his hat. Under his hat, you say? Nah. <laughs> um, what, it was, a, it was that an accidental you know, euphemism or something? No, no. I just... I'm just thinking. Um, okay. Well, uh... Do you have any questions for me? I, it feels like I've been asking a bunch of questions. No, totally understandable. I'm a, I'm a regular. You're, you're a new guy. Uh, no, no problems. Uh, I have no, no real questions, my friend. Uh, I think we'll get along just fine. Uh, and as, as much as I like everybody, I try to keep my distance personally. Besides, we're only going to see each other for the next five days or so, right? But uh, no, I think we're all set. Cool, cool. Sounds good. And Ugbor turns to walk away. And he goes, oh, um, is there any designated place for the uninitiated to uh, throw up? I mean, anywhere over the side of the ship would be great. And if you don't, then we got to clean it up, and that the crew will not thank you for that. Mm -hmm. That's, yep, yep, okay. So the ocean is a trash can. Yep, sure is. Fish will love it, and fish food. Fish food. Righto. I'm going to go and feed some fish. Sounds good there, bud. Don't fall over. Uh, Pell, after it's been a few hours now, um, you, you can only assume your shift has ended, but nobody has said anything to you yet. Um, you are now in open water. It is uh, you, you don't see any landmass near you at all. It is blue waves as far as you can see. What are you doing? He puts his little his little straw hat on. He's had it on for a little bit now. He takes like a little piece out and he puts it in his mouth. And he's like just chewing on it. Mm -hmm. Just looking around. He's a very patient guy. He can sit up here forever. Mm 
And Samael, um, you sit in the cargo hold for quite a while, enough to incur a, a short rest. Um, eventually, you might think to yourself um, that you've been on here for a while and might desire change or something, but you at least come to you to think about where you're at. What are you doing? Mm, I'm going to uh, stand up and stretch my legs, and I'm going to go on uh, to the deck to see what's going on. You come up to the deck. Um, as you pass, you see uh, the elf Helianaka uh, coming from the upper deck down to the lower deck and uh, is proceeding towards the guards' quarters. You head up to the deck, and not much has changed. You now notice that the ship is out at sea and uh, you're totally landless. And uh, there is a strong breeze, fresh, salty air. Uh, Fills your hair and your nose. Um, not much going on. Interesting. Do I uh, see anybody on deck? Um, uh, if you, you see a few crew, um, the captain and uh, Jonathan are still up on the um, on the bridge. Um, the crew running about. Uh, you see Vork at the bow of the ship. Um, you don't see anybody else that really interests you. The the crew though is a uh, fanciful mixture of races, mostly human with um, some elves, dwarves, even a tabaxi or two, um, and two dwarves that you've seen so far. You don't know any, anybody's names, and they're all wearing clothes that are unremarkable, all basically dressed for life at sea, um, either being cool, flowing, uh, dirtied, ready for work, or waterproof in some way, like their boots. But uh, this colorful crew is uh, all you see here. The crew and in, in, in your lot and the captain. So, so do I see Ugbor on the deck? Throw his guts up. Well, yeah, it, it takes a minute or two. And then Ugbor emerges from the uh, from the lower deck and uh, stands in the center of the main deck. Ugbor, what are you doing? Um, steadily throughout the morning, the subtle but constant rocking has certainly made me queasy, and I am going to quaff some of this tea. Okay. Um, uh, Matt, check Facebook. Um, you take out uh, one of the bottles, and you uncork it, kind of put it under your nose and smell it for a second, and slowly drink it, and then just down the whole thing. It's it's pleasant. It's a little bitter, um, but not not uncomfortably so. And um, but it, it tastes a little bit of uh, kind of like an elderberry mix, but it's not unpleasant. It takes a few minutes for it to settle in, and after a while, your stomach is settled, and you feel just a little bit, little bit more resolute, a little, bit, a little bit more sound on your feet. Um, you're going to get a um, a plus one to your constitution for the next little bit. Okay, since Ugbor's on deck, I'd like to uh, approach him. Uh, so... Ugbor, did you uh, discover any more information in that? Well, I, uh, I talked to Vork. Vork thinks that uh, there's a good chance we'll find the package. Maybe it's not down below deck. Um, I also discovered, talking to the lion fellow, uh, where Pell and I bunk, that right. um, we're actually doing a drop off and pick up at the next stop, so there's more stuff coming on board. So we've yet to receive all the cargo. Okay. Yeah, that uh, that surprisingly seems to be the case. I can only imagine we're dropping some of this stuff off. Gotcha. Okay. Well, to be continued, I guess. I do suppose. Hey, did you ever run into Pell? I have not seen him all day. Nope, I haven't seen him. 
wonder what he's up to. But that's, that was the pun guy. Uh, I born. You hear in your head suddenly the voice of someone you haven't thought about in, the, in a few minutes. Hey! Don't die yet! That'd be pretty shitty if you guys did. It'd make a real shitty song. Alright, peace. Where the fuck? That, that's the message back, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> he sends one to, to, uh, to Sam. He says, Tell Ogbor it was a fucking spell. It's the yeah, last that's one. right, that's right. Ogbor's <laughs> clearly disturbed. Oh my God. He's looking, looking around. <laughs> Can't waste any more spell slots on this. This is just a spell. So, okay, so Samuel, do, do you have a reply message for uh, Laszlo? Yes, what the fuck? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Laszlo's like, god damn it. <laughs> so tired now. Uh, utter confusion, really. Then uh, suddenly Vorix and Mel and I bore here loudly and Pell faintly the ring of the bell on the deck. Ding, ding, ding. Shift change on guard. Shift change on guard. This is a, a voice from Jonathan that you didn't expect, a little bit louder than you were used to from before. Pell just like stick his head out from the top of the crow's nest. Someone coming up here? Oh, fuck, hold on, I gotta stop talking like Lysa. <clears throat> Someone coming up here? Hello? He's like waddle his way down. <laughs> Just like kicking at the, at the deck because he knows it's his turn to go up <laughs> and stare at the moving water. Go on, go bud. Up. You are on your feet. Uh, he might, you might actually enjoy it. You never know. It is a really nice view. Yeah, yeah, a nice view. I really hope you guys enjoy vomit showers. You want me to come up there with you, buddy? No, it couldn't you need, hurt. You need a bucket. Get a bucket and a mop. <laughs> But did you, uh, did you take your potion? I did, I did, and it's helping. Um, I'm not puking right now. Well, that's good. Try yeah. not to puke whenever you drink it. It won't yeah. work that way. Yeah. Um, I should probably clue you in, by the way, Pell. Uh, I did a pretty thorough investigation of the current cargo, and I couldn't find anything that matched the description in our letter. Hmm. Um, I also discovered that we are unloading some of this cargo and taking on new cargo at the next stop. Well, we'll just keep an eye out after we get to Port Eli. Yeah. Till then, just try to try to learn learn the beauty of the sea. I mean, it's nice. Give it a chance. It's nice. You you say that like it's easy, but it's not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Like Borg goes back to mumbling, and he like. He wraps his arm in a, co in a coil with some of the rope and starts hoisting himself up the mast towards the uh, thing. Okay. Towards, towards the thingy. Um, Abor, as you uh, proceed up the ropes, you get about two or three steps up when uh, you hear Jonathan say, Drop anchor! We're at the reef! 
and the 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 crew on the ship start to uh, collapse a lot of the sails and once they have collapsed all the sails they then drop anchor and the ship begins to slow down to a, a stop and then stops moving does this mean it's time for fishing nothing much else is said uh, but you see um, a couple people um, from, let me find my notes here sorry um, you see Parker and who is a, a gnome throw out a large net uh, into the water and while he is working on that net there is another uh, half elf who is throwing out a line uh, then you see the captain and um, Lycan both also throw a line in the water if there's like a spare fishing pole they'll be like you care if I can throw a net line out there Oh, uh, that would be fine, but this is all the this is all the rods we got right now. We tend to use them all, and we give them to people that we uh, we know are going to do a good job at it. Not that you won't, I just don't know you. Well, fair enough. I just thought of something stupid. Can let me see. Can I just cast sleep at a point in the water? <laughs> Gotta make a bunch of fish go to sleep. Okay, hold up. Hold up. <laughs> Let me see. Let me see. Okay. Let me see this. Okay. I'll say go, you, you can... You can certainly try. Go ahead and cast the spell, and I think you have to roll for hit hit dice, right? Like to, for hit points. Yeah, five d eight. Okay, go for it. So, so we're at a reef, right? Yeah, you are. I mean, you don't see anything. Um, you you can't tell much from where you're at, but you have stopped in open water, and people are, are fishing. That's all you can see. So if there's like any like reefs or anything, can I like try to see if there's like fish going in and out of it and stuff like that? I or mean, like any schools of fish? You can try to roll perception, but you're just on the deck of a ship looking at water right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. A twenty-four. Good lord, man. Um. <clears throat> Pill steps up with one foot on the. Uh, the edge of the ship lifts himself up holding onto a rope for one of the sails and looks over the the edge of the, of the ship and you can see next to the ship um, under the water which is very clear it's probably you know 20 feet down you can see a couple little structures of different colors but uh, it's it's pretty deep down there you don't see any fish per se you see a little bit of movement but it's hard to see from where you're at but you we see the general structures of the reef from where you're at well let me see it's about all i can really do besides like just blasting it with fucking garden bolts What are you doing? I don't know. I, I, I will say real quick before you uh, make your decision on that, you also do notice a couple small islands that are off the edge of the boat since you are standing on the edge of the boat and roll that perception. There are some islands um, not too far off. There uh, are two islands to your left, basically where you're looking at on the left side of the boat. Um, and. Uh, the, uh, there's two islands. One is crescent-shaped that has a sort of stacked uh, look to it with different um, platforms, different little plateaus on the island. And the other is circular in nature and a little bit lower set. Um, these islands are more or less uh, glorified sandbars that have been vegetated. They're just above the sea level. You think you, think you could... Uh, you could get to them if you wanted to travel there quickly with one of the um, the best dinghies or swim if you wanted to. It wouldn't take you long, um, while that you know, because everybody is fishing right now in the boat. It, the ship is halted. 
but you do see uh, some islands over there and fish below you somewhat. Hmm. Be like, I've got an idea. Can I borrow a dinghy? What's that? Can I go out to that little sandbar over there? I have an idea. Uh, that's a negatory on the dinghy. You're free to take a little swim if you want. We'll be here for for about an hour or so, hour two hours. But uh, you know, we're not going to use a dinghy for an adventure like that. You can swim if you want. Okay. And this is stupid. This is stupid. But I'm gonna do it. So Pell's just gonna jump over the south and just fucking he's not gonna jump where people are fishing at. Mm hmm He'll like mm -hmm. go to the spot where somebody's not fishing at and be like I'll be right back. <laughs> He'll just jump in the water. Like Warren Samuel, you you see um Tonel just ask a question. And then take off his armor and then jump overboard. Goodbye. Can I, uh. Can I cast haste on him? Um. Uh, yes, I'll allow it. I'll allow it. Okay. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna cast it. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm gonna raise my hand up and. And uh, envision Pale just speeding through the water as fast as humanly possible. Okay, as you jump over overboard, Pell, um, the magic bolt from Samuel uh, weaves his hand and grabs you around your ankle just as it disappears over the edge of the boat, and the magic envelops you in a golden shimmering aura, and you are hasted. Fucking skeet to that island. Good luck, friend. Ah. Which island are you going to? Uh, whichever one's closest to the boat. They're more or less equidistant. Uh, again, there's a, a crescent-shaped island and a circular-shaped island. Crescent. Crescent, okay. Good to know. It takes you a few minutes to get there. Um, this, the, the, a little bit further than you anticipated at first glance. <laughs> but uh, but you, you do make it after a little bit of swimming. Um, where do you swim to on the island? Where am I coming from? You're coming from the this side right here. I'll swim towards right around here. Okay. You get to the uh, the sandbar island, and your feet just slop into the sand. It's like just a soup. Most of it's underwater. Um, all this right here, th this is all underwater by at least a couple inches. Um, if you were you know, to get to somewhere close to here, you can climb up on the rocks. But until you get to there, you, you're swimming at a weird kind of pace tired question is it like closer to night time no it is uh just afternoon oh afternoon okay never mind i have a question where did mm -hmm. you get these assets uh from a uh place called mind your business fair enough no, no i i i, I straight up googled stuff i don't know where this came from i think there's a little patreon thing at the bottom yeah it looks cool though yeah, I stole it. I don't so, know where it came from. So I'm out here. Mm -hmm. No net. If I was to get fish, I have no way of getting them back. You know what? Fucking, I'm already here. What's. What. Is it like go up to like up here? Is it like start getting like more land? Oh yeah. oh, yeah. Once you get above the. the this level here, once you get up to these rocks and this area here, this is all you know, one rock above the water. Uh, so a few minutes get over here. Let's say they're going to be here about an hour. Mm -hmm. Yeah, different wedges and platforms are just stacked on top of each other. A couple, a couple palm trees and some light vegetation and grasses have grown on the on the rocks and uh, areas here. But you're still in the water. You can't see much from your angle. 
tail's gonna get like right over here. Okay. And I'm just gonna get like out of the water for a second, and, like catch my breath. Okay. Climb some rocks and sit there. Take a second. Um, as you're sitting there, roll a perception check for me. Hmm. Twenty-two. From your um, vantage point here, you can see that in this direction, there appears to be a statue on the very top of this um, of this uh, this plateau here. Hmm. Does it look like it'd be like difficult to get over here? It would take a minute to climb. It doesn't uh, appear to be more than maybe four feet per platform. You, you could uh, relatively easily at your size um, climb up. It might take you a minute, but you can you can climb up without difficulty. Right. Although, you, go although you do see that over here, there is a um, pretty non-steep area to go to, which leads to these rocks, then around over here, and it kind of spirals up. Somehow I'll get up to this little statue. I'll make my way over that way. It looks cool and it piqued my interest. Okay. When you get up to the statue, it is. Uh, it appears to be. Uh, matter of fact, go ahead and roll me a history check. Okay. Five. You don't know what this creature is. It's very alien to you. You are not familiar with this at all. But it appears to be a statue of somebody. Um, it's highly corroded and worn out. Um, it appears to be made of a combination of stone and metal. Um, it's a figure who is wielding a trident. And in in their hand, they're holding the trident up like they're going to throw it. And in their, in their offhand, there is a, a bracelet uh, of some sort on their wrist. And in that metal bracelet on the stone statue, there is a glass bead that is uh, pure blue, made out of some sort of gemstone material. Hmm. I'm going to roll something to myself in private and see if I will do okay. what I do. <clears throat> so Pell's gonna lift it up the little glass bead. Mm-hmm. He's just gonna inspect it for a second. I mean it's it's uh, slightly inside the the metal. If you wanted to, it wouldn't be hard to take out a knife or something and pry it out, but it is it is in, in embedded in the statue. Yeah, he's going to do it. He's going to try to pry it out. Okay. Uh, doesn't take much. You take out a knife and uh, wiggle it for a second, and it just kind of pops out and falls in your hand. It's perfectly round like a marble. The uh, blue uh, insides shift very gently when you move it around in your hand. Hmm. Can I roll Arcana to see if this is like magical in any way? Sure, for a work I'm not good at it. Um, with a 13, you get the notion that this is magical in some way. You don't know what school of magic it is, how strong it is, any, any kind of inclination on what it does, but you know it's magical. So could I take the little bracelet? Is that like possible, or is it just like like built into the fucking no, statue? Um, it would it maybe might bend a little, but you can probably take the bracelet off. It's made of a of rusted iron, um, but you can take the bracelet off the statue. Oh, if it's rusted, then fuck that. I'll just keep the little jewel. Okay, fair enough. Uh, Hello. Hey, buddy. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? You all right? Yep. Sure. For now. Okay. Well, um, to catch you up just a little bit, uh, you are on the boat. 
after uh well i'll give you a recap personally later but right now you're on the boat um you were not selected for guard duty um pell and Ugbor were because winter moon and an elf named helianaka uh took the other two slots for reasons oh. and so you are on on the boat as a passenger not being paid but as long as you provide your own food and sleep in the cargo hold your your transit is free uh, out of the kindness of the captain my, my my transit technically is free what you mean i have the pirate background so i can free <clears throat> transport on oh yeah yeah that's correct that is correct on ships. <laughs> cool well that would have come in handy to know anyway so yeah uh, yeah, you're on you're on the ship. Ugbor and Pell are being paid to guard the ship. You guys are not responsible for anything other than yourselves. You uh, you and Samuel. Um, they have stopped at the re at the uh, Rose Coral Reef, um, just south of the Glistening Gulf, and some it's somewhere between Bayside and Port Eli. And here they are stopping for an hour or two to uh, catch some fish for fresh food for everybody on the ship. And just off the reef, there are these sandbar islands that Pell has decided to explore on his own by swimming across the water to them. And he has found a statue and is, is exploring that. Uh, while he's doing that, just to catch up a little bit, is there anything that you were doing? Because before you were just lazily laying on the bow of the ship, staring at the ocean as you were uh, traveling. Is there, anything that, is there anything that you particularly want to do? Um, I mean, is anybody else like on this little island thing that Pell's on? No, Pell's just swam, swam, it, swam to it by himself. <laughs> There was the, there was this crescent island and one that is round in shape. So, where you parked and he swam out here? Yep, you parked above the reef of some sort, and um, uh, Pell decided to, to instead of fish or hang out, he's checking out this island, this little reef, this little sandbar island. Um, shit, did you send us a version of the map before? Yeah, I did. What did you, did you send? I uh, sent it on Facebook just now again. Uh, okay, I'll get it. Okay. Now, where did you say we were at? Between uh, Bayside and Port Eli. Port Eli is your first is your next destination before you head all the way to Sunder. Okay. You said we're like halfway. Yeah. So where is one of these little like these islands to the left? Is that where Matt's at? No, those are major islands. These are just okay. tiny little sandbar islands that don't they wouldn't appear on the map. Okay. Um, do I recognize anywhere here for anything? Roll a history check. Uh. 16. You know the islands are over here, generally speaking. You don't know anything about them. Um, you know the reef is uh, famous for being rich in fish, but not very fully explored because it is dangerously um, also full of sharks because there are many fish. Okay. So nothing really worth it. I mean, you don't know. I mean, that's, that's all you know about it. Oh, oh. Can I assume that I would have used my psychic whispers? Sure, we can we can assume that. Chatting, can you possibly turn your TV down a little bit? Yeah, hold on a second. I might be able to turn this down. Did that help any, or is that just hurting me? Helped a little bit. Yeah. <clears throat> That's a lot more manageable, actually. Um, let's see. Um, oh, I rolled that. I was like, where mm -hmm. was I at? So six hours is what we have. Correct. How far do they go? That's a, that's a good point. What's the distance on Saki Whispers? Is it just, is it this this plane of existence, or is there a range on it? Uh, uh, as long as we're within a mile. A mile. Okay. 
We also don't need to speak the same language, if anything, if we ever get to that point. Like, it, we just understand each other. Do I see any fish over here now? Um, from your angle, you do see some fish um, around the back half of the ship, mainly. Um, just shadows going back and forth. But you, you can see some fish from this angle. On the back half of the ship? Yeah, like towards the back half of the ship. Not quite where they're fishing at, but close enough where they're getting some fish. Alright. Well, Pale. Not seeing anything else on the island of note besides a cool statue. We'll probably try to swim back. Okay. Give me one second. My headset's about to die. I'm going to switch to my uh, speakers and microphone. So, how far out is that island? Well, it took me a couple minutes to swim. Less. Oh. Yeah, Almost certainly be. less. Okay. The, the ship, ship does, does this, I think, I think uh, yeah. if I recall correctly, the ship will do this once a day. It'll be obviously in different places each time. But um, they try to stock as much fresh meat as they can so that they don't have to think a lot about packing food on their journeys. Okay, so they make multiple little trips or multiple stops to keep from having to stock yeah. up. Okay. Yeah. The most Yep. Yeah. Um so I guess I wanna telepathically talk to Peo and be like, Hey <laughs> is, there, Hello. is there anything uh any reason to come out there? Anything worth it? Anything weird? There's or a statue that I seen I had uh, this little glass ball, but I took it. What? What? Uh, what was the statue of? Some weird thing I've never seen before. Oh. Then, like creature? I, I think so. Yeah. Humanoid? Does it look like a fish? It is oh. some kind of humanoid. I don't know what it is, though. I want you to be able to do what my old uh, pal could do and kind of show me a picture of it, but that's fine. No, I'm not that handy. I'm sorry. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. But well, yeah. I'm about to swim. Oh, swim. Swim away. Cannonball. That was a hell of a jump. He ran and jumped. Um. So, what's, what's Ugborn and Samael doing? I do believe Ugbor is up in the crow's nest. Centering himself. Trying not to think about the fact that he's out on open water. Oh yeah, and you... You want me to roll perception? Okay. Also, Vork, uh, Ugbor told you that the little box that we were hired to find or to keep track of isn't on the boat. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of important what? to the story. Yeah, so it's not currently on the boat, but there is this crewmate, and I told you this. There, there's. Oh, wait a minute. Did I tell Vork that? No. Maybe no, not. but that's Vork all you would you. know. But you but would have Vork... been present for a conversation wherein I found out that we're uh, going to be picking up. Yeah. Oh, like more people, more stuff, so the box isn't here yet, is what we're assuming. That's the assumption. Okay. It's a, uh, it's either not here yet, or it's hidden. How many how many crew do we have currently? Uh, I think he said there were 15, including us. Including us, and... Okay. Um, where is this moon bitch at? Uh, I sent her to watch the cargo. I want to seek her out yes the perception check Ooh. oh god that one
I'm assuming I'm walking from the front of the boat to the cargo. I want to look up at Ugbor, and I'll just telepathically, because I'm not going to yell. Just be like, see anything good up there? I see the inside of my eyelids. Oh. <laughs> just, just look up. Just, just open them. It's fine. Feel the movement of the waves. In my mind, I make the Ralph noise. That... It's fine. You're okay. Um, I want to approach her. Um, you mentioned something before. You already know. Um, you're very familiar, but I'm not entirely sure I remember you. Okay, there we go. Sorry. The recording's going to be goofed because when I switched to my microphone, the OBS wasn't synced to the microphone. Is it? So every time I spoke, it wasn't recorded. But anyway, it is now. We're good. Okay. So, how, how, one, how do you come by this information? And two, how did you come by that specific information? And why about me? I am not, uh,. You say a privilege to disclose that at this time? Why? Ah. That's the question, isn't it? Yeah. 
You must live with this wonder. Well, what about the interest in me? Is it, am I the reason you know these things? Or did you just happen to acquire a list of the crew from the ship? I don't know. That's a thinker, isn't it? You're going to make this very complicated, aren't you? Well, what fun would there be otherwise? So... Samuel, where are you at this time? I'm just hanging out on deck. Okay, you're on deck. Good to know. You're making me fast. I have no purpose here. Just a fair <laughs> boat. Mm-hmm. I'm a passenger. Yeah, dude. No responsibility here. <laughs> so like, I'm fucking tired. You fucking was fast. Was <laughs> she looks at you, Vorek, and says, Your curiosity is delicious. Do I detect, like, anything, like, obviously magical? Um, real one arcana check. Other than the connection between you two. No. <laughs> That's electric. You don't notice anything magical on her person. Um, even the glasses that you know are magic because you were told by Pell that. You don't see any obvious in inscriptions on them or... Anything that would give that away, otherwise. I don't have to take like any spells or anything. Not just from uh, you looking at her, looking for anything arcane in nature, any inscriptions, any any obvious auras or flashings. Nothing uh, gives away any indication of arcana. Hey. Is there anything else you can ask of the sleepy kitty, Mr. Voek? As a, after all, I am here to guard these, uh, and she knocks above her head, these boxes from any box thieves. So what, what, what do you know about the actual thing we're supposed to be guarding? I don't know what you mean by actual thing. Is there a specific yeah. item that we are to guard above all others? Because I was not given this instruction upon my job description. That sounds like someone who is good at information is not as good as she thought she was. So you're saying that there is a, an item. Would you like to share? I mean, probably not. Unless you want to tell me. Yeah, I'm not sure what you're talking about. I'm looking for information now. And she's just smi smiling at you now. Yes, exactly. You're looking for information, and so am I. Yeah. So what's the interest in me? Yeah, I guess we'll never know. Well, I guess you'll be guarding something you don't know about. That's fine. My contract did not include it, and I will not lose money over it. Now, she, she's now using a combination of shifting her muscles and, and her tail and is now rocking back and forth as if she's in an invisible hammock in the middle of the aisle. Invisible what? Like, it, it's as if she's in an invisible hammock, the way she's shifting her muscles and swinging while, her, while she dangles from, from two walls with her, with her feet in her head. Um, is, is she still, her eyes still closed? Yeah, her eyes are still closed. I want to keep her feet off the box. <laughs> Okay, make a, uh, I'll tell you what, make a, an acrobatics check. Or, sorry, an athletics check for that. Damn. Just stuck with acrobatics. Still good, still good. Okay, let me check something real quick. Um, where is that stupid book? Here it is. Okay. <clears throat> 
do 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 Okay, so that and your athletics was 19. Yep. 17. Okay. So you go to kick her feet out from under her, uh, knocking her off the wall. As your foot swiftly moves upward, she uh, does a thing where she lifts up one foot and then the other and lets your foot swiftly pass under her feet while dancing over your feet and reattaching yourself to the wall. And, and you're... you're Pass fails and you almost you almost fall backwards from, from expecting the impact and then you know, not hitting anything. So did that detect magic there, or was it just her? That was just her. Oh, uh, come now. That's no no need to be rude. She then hops. <clears throat> she then hops down off of the off of the crates. And uh, turns and looks at you. Now, is there something you need, we need to air out, Mr. Bordick? I just want to know why you seem to be here while I'm here. And I have to know things about me that no one else does. I am simply doing a job. And she, at, at this point, she has her hand on her hip and the other arm is just dangling loose at her side. Where do I fall into that? You, I imagine, have signed up for a similar job, have you not? Yes, but... Wow. It's, it's very coincidental that you and I both, both find ourselves here. here. When, when once again, you know things about me that no one else does. The others that knew those things aren't alive anymore. Is that right? Uh, the last that I knew, yeah. yeah. Hmm. Well, maybe I just have a, a curiousness for history. And your names, and the name of your ship came up in a, uh, uh, a coincidental story that I was investigating, and maybe I just happened to know. What was the story? Yeah, nothing I am willing to tell you at this time. And she is turning to uh, walk away. Maybe I can help you with some details. My ship. That means I was there. Maybe. Only time will tell. And at this point, she has reached the end of the uh, the aisle that you're standing in, and rounds the corner to come back at the other aisle to walk up the stairs. I see anything potentially valuable in here right now? Um, roll me investigation. Well, are you are you investigating anything for anything particular, or are you just looking around the room? Um, whatever is cargo wise down this aisle. This side is largely just crates, barrels, and boxes. Um, you can go ahead and roll me an investigation check. Just for anything, you know, like that sticks out, it looks like it would be... You know. Eight. No, everything seems pretty well boarded up, nailed, tied down. Um, any Anything that could be uh, attempted to be altered or stolen out of this room would be pretty obvious. Okay. Um, and telepathically to everybody wants, I'm be like, I don't trust this cat bitch. We need to uh, keep an eye on her. Samuel, while well, you are good. Hell doesn't say that while this woman. No. <laughs> Just like, are you are you mentally drowning? Trying to stay up. Um, Samuel, you you're on deck, right? Yeah, I see Pale. Um, yeah, looking out in the ocean, it's pretty obvious. Um, he's splashing his way back to the boat, back to the ship. Do you don't have to play Pale? I got it. I got it. you're about halfway back right. to the ship. Um, Vork. <laughs> You, it takes you a second because you're looking directly at him, and it's obvious. And you see uh, something of a shadow following Pell. Um, you might want to hurry up. There's something. Just don't, don't, don't stop. Don't turn around. 
there's something behind you and under. Um, question. Mm hmm. Investigation, perception, history, whatever combination of. Since I am well versed with the seas, can I make out roughly what this might be? Uh, what, what the shadow is? Yep. Um, yeah, go ahead and roll me a, uh, we'll say a history check with advantage. Given your background. 13. You don't know what exactly it is, but it is large fish shaped, and uh, you assume it to be something predatory in some way because it's chasing Pell, and at a pretty decent speed. How far away is Pell? Pell is about halfway to the boat now, which is about, we'll say, 50 feet away. Uh, Pell? Hurry. Yeah. If I fucking do my furball, uh, turn invisible. Um, remind, remind me of that feature, please. As a bonus action, turn invisible until the start of your next turn. You attack, deal damage, or force the saving throw once per short rest. Okay, yes. So you, 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 cer you certainly can if you want to. Uh, you'll be, it'll be for, for one round, so for six seconds. That's fine. That's fine. We're good. If I see that, well, no. I don't know. Fuck it. No, I'm just going to cast greater invisibility on myself. Okay, so you're going to cast greater invisibility on yourself. Okay, uh, let me don't take myself on that to sign now. Um, I'm going to try to throw a dagger at this thing. Okay, from where you're at, which is 50 feet away? Mm -hmm. I can throw it 60 feet. Okay, okay. Um, so yeah, go ahead and roll an attack with that. Not really looking to kill it, obviously. I just want to kind of mm -hmm. try to scare it away. And I'll say roll it with disadvantage. Well, here's the thing for us to discuss. How do your psychic knives deal with water? I, I, I do not know these answers. Um, we'll say roll an attack with disadvantage. We'll just do that. So, oh, I get what you're saying. So... Because you're, you're rolling, your perception of the target is slided off because of the refraction of the water, but also it's going through water. Well, okay, I get what you're saying, because you're saying since they're psychic, would they technically... Yeah, because as, as, as far as we know, they, they, they're not affected by gravity, right? It's kind of what we, what we established, I think. So if, if gravity's not a thing, is water a thing? I don't know. So... Um, uh, but purely based on the on the distance and the and the water vision, more or less about how objects appear underwater, we'll just have you roll an attack with disadvantage. Okay. I'll we'll we'll say we can flip a coin and make that decision later on if we want to do it that way. Which, Which I don't know if, if it's psychic. Does it? Let me see if that's been decided or not, real quick. Or I don't believe. I don't know. I would assume that. How would a psychic attack work through water? Well, there's no real disadvantage to other attacks being in water like that, is there? I haven't looked at underwater paint combat like that. Not really, not unless like, you have like a weapon in your... Like, is there certain weapons that if you try to attack, then you have disadvantage with attacking? The dagger is not one of them. Dagger you can attack like fully in the water. Okay. Cool, cool. We'll go with it. Yeah, and I don't see anything here contradicting that on the page I pulled up. So we'll say that, you know, that's fine, but because of the the water to non water attack, we'll say disadvantage. Okay. Just, Just for the whole sake, sake of the water, water refraction and. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to try to aim. Like, like I'm not going to headshot this bitch, but I'm going to try to aim center so I have the best shot. shot. Okay. Because you just said it is quite large. Yeah, let's see. <laughs> Just so, uh, for my own curiosity, what are Ugbor and Samael doing right now? I know you say uh, you said you're on deck, and Ugbor's in the crow's nest, right? Yep. Okay, uh, you're seeing Vork talking to Pell over the, over the the boat. Is that you're, you're doing anything about that? I hear a little loud. I see Vork doing what? Oh, sorry, you see Vorek talking to Pell over the side of the boat. I didn't know if that would cause you to do anything. Who? Oh, 
Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm going to walk over and uh, join them. Okay. Can, can they technically, technically hear us? Since I'm, we're speaking telepathically. Oh, well, you, you were speaking telepathically. Well, uh, does your does your telepathy allow you to target your uh, your target of your speech, or is it a group thing? Uh, mm-hmm. Connection. She's at three creatures you can see, and then roll blah blah for a number of hours. The chosen creatures can speak telepathically with you, and you can speak telepathically with them as long as you're within one mile. Okay, so I guess that's your choice. Do you want a group text, or do you want to, to talk to people individually? So I assume it would be a like group text. It's a big group chat. I mean, I'll, I'll let you tell me that since you just, it, it says you can do that, so it's however you want to do it. I mean, I would assume so. Like, if we all need to, like, for the, like, we'll say for the sake of, like, emergency, I would want everybody, I would rather be able to be like, oh shit, blah, 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 and everybody can hear me. So I would say that they can hear. Okay, so, Boring Samo, you hear this conversation happening about uh, something pursuing Pell. <laughs> Turn invisible. Okay. Um, so you cast a spell and you turn invisible. Tell me what you're doing now after turning invisible. Uh, just the boat. Okay. So, um, Boric, you uh, you're watching Pale and watching this the shadow pursue him. Um, you see him all of a sudden take one second to raise an arm up, not swim for half a second, cast a spell, and then he poof, goes invisible. And then you see the water continue to splash, obviously, as he, as he frantically moves towards the boat. Um, if he is in the water, then you pull up the thingy. I'm going to cast water breathing on hell if that's possible. Like, I, uh, I don't know what the range on that spell. I have to look it up. I don't you want to do it. Um, oh, that's the wrong person. Um, hell is, let's see. Uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. Yeah, he's, he's basically right there. Oh no, Cody. You have to see me to be able to do it. <laughs> <laughs> away, away, away. Oh, that's great. I'll, I'll just I'll say as, as a heads up, um, you have to be able to see the creature, and because he is magically greater, you know, greater in invisibility, you cannot see him. And based on the way the Arcana is is uh, written. Um, even if he was in, within range, you would not be able to cast that spell. Sorry. And also, also, fa- also factor in that the ship is probably uh, the the main deck is ten feet above the water, as well. So, okay. the, so the, there, there's, 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 yeah, so the, the, there's a there's a Pythagoras theorem going on here with the spell range. But anyway, um, yeah. So you're throwing the dagger. Go ahead and roll attack with disadvantage. <laughs> Well, that's, that's probably the disadvantage. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, 19. Um, let me pull that up. 12, 12, 12, 12, 12 technically. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, you use 19 if you want. No, no, I, I got you, I got you. Um, with a 12, you, you throw your dagger, and it's not exactly where you want it to, but you see uh, the dagger hit um, something, uh, whatever the shadow was. It wasn't exactly where you wanted it, but you did hit it in some regard. Roll damage on that. <laughs> and this would be a sneak attack as well, by the way. So, 21? I, okay, I guess 21 because it's being blank. Um, yeah, your dagger hits, and you see the the shadow you know, swim frantically left, right, and then circle around and, and then bolt away from where it was going. And after a second, you see this cloud of blood just bubble up to the surface and Pell is, ah. Pell is still frantically running you're know, swimming towards the ship no he, he was uh, he was not that close and he's heading away from before it got to the surface I was, I was about to take the damage off on my face I was going to use a hollow man effect and be like you, you can, can see it now cast it now so, so I have a question if I turn around do I see like 
of the blood? Is it close to me? You see blood um, ten feet behind you. As if you were turning around immediately. Can I not point my finger and cast sleep? Like, you know, he got hit, so I'm gonna cast it at like third level. Um, sure, let me look at the, the range and stuff on that real quick. I think it's 90 feet. Uh, uh, man, you flicked this fail. I, I pulled it up already. Yeah, go ahead and roll your, your D8s. Uh, so that would be... 9 D8. Uh, 33. 33. Okay. Um, you turn around and just wing an arm backwards and shoot a sleep spell over the water um, a couple feet beyond the, where the blood is. And it takes a second. And then you see sudden flow to the surface. From your vision, it's just a mass. You don't know what it is. It's your own level with this thing. And the water is hard to see through at your vision. Um, from the boat, um, Vorik and Samael, and Ugbor, if he were to look, but I doubt he would look, you would see a uh, seven-foot-long reef shark bubble to the surface and is just uh, weighing on the surface. <laughs> and he's, he's bleeding profusely. Um, I'm going to go. I'm going to throw another bag right Roll an attack. I'm going to keep swimming back in the boat. Okay. Uh, 13. 19. Yeah, that, that definitely hits. Go ahead and roll damage. Matter of fact, not even necessary. He had one hit point. He had one hit point left. Um, uh, I just went out and get it. Yeah, the, the shark um, well, would would have bled out honestly if it, and if not because of that, he uh, he would have died because sharks need to move to breathe and he would have lost his one hit point for suffocation. <laughs> yeah, so the, the shark is is dispatched. I want to get it. I hope you get it out for work. Since I'm already in the water. Okay, so you're going to go back and get it? And I'm going to get it out. I'm already here. I'm already here. Work jumps in the water. He does some big fancy dive outside the boat. Okay, roll, roll acrobatics for me. <laughs> Ooh, so you seen that, right? Good enough. Not not the most uh, elegant of things, but you do manage to dive into the water. A little rusty. Then uh, and, and people saw saw this happen and see you do this because the people are fishing over the side of the boat, um, and they're just <laughs> and watching. We take down a shark with two of his. Like, and after after, okay. after the dive in the water, you hear a bunch of applause and people laughing and talking and just jabbering about it and talking about the shark and everything, how good they're going to eat. Yeah, that's what I'm getting. Good eating. Yeah. Been away from the ocean long enough. I haven't had shark in a while. Ugbor, have you looked up during this entire time? What? I was asking Ugbor if he's looked up this entire time. Yeah, he's <laughs> Anthony, you still with us? He dead. He dead. He dead. He dead. Oh no. He's peeping somewhere. Good night, little war. Well, let's see here. You fell asleep. Man, does that thing you see him say anything about psychic weapons? Uh, I don't think so. Psychic <coughs> weapons. <laughs> Okay, but uh, yeah, it takes very very little effort for you guys to retrieve the shark and bring it back on board. Once, once you get close to the ship, um, a couple of the crew throw out a net and you help them um, kind of tie the net around the, the shark and bring it up to the deck. And um, everybody is very appreciative and you can claps on the back and uh, you're dripping wet as you get back on the boat, but it doesn't bother you. The, the weather's warm enough. But everybody's giving you pats on the back and, and, and thanks, congratulations. And um, the uh, the uh, lizard folk, um, uh, the chef crops, 
he is he, he comes out of the kitchen, sees it, and is ve- he starts chuckling. <laughs> Very good catch, much food, much food. And he reaches down with one hand and slams his his uh, wizard like fist into the back back of the skull of the shark and drags it across the deck into the kitchen. Works just gonna bail to everybody. <laughs> it's all around the boat. P- people were were pleased, but at the bow they're like, eh, off. Who else kills a shark today? Yeah, yeah fries. Right. <laughs> that was pretty good day. And I'm not even getting paid to be here. <laughs> so while uh, everybody's like, all. Oh, Talking and being like, I'll see you, shark. I'm gonna try to find some ale. Uh, good. Hey, so, uh, while I was out on that little island, I found this weird statue thingy. And I found this little, I'll pull that little jewel thingy. I found this. There's something weird about it, but I don't really know. Can you take a look at it, maybe? I'm gonna, if I hear that, telepath, whatever. If I hear that, I'm gonna walk over. Uh, you want me to take a look at it? Yeah, you seem a little bit smarter about that kind of stuff than me. Uh, sure. Yeah, let's see it. Alright, I'll just hand it over to you. Okay, do I know anything about this? Um, roll an arcana check. I certainly will. No, you can tell that it's magical in some regard. Uh, to what degree or a put, uh, application, you're not sure. Well, honestly, I have no fucking idea what this is. I thought it was magical. Hmm. not tell you. Sorry, man. If I'm over there, can I check it out? Yeah, let's, uh, yeah. maybe let's check, check out Ward and see if he knows. Look at it. Why don't you just look at it, Ward? Look at it, look at it. Arcana? Yep, Arcana. Thirteen. The same, it's, it's a tough nut to crack. You see that a glass bead, which is, you know, odd in itself because you don't see, you know, it's not a common thing, really. Especially one of this, you know, pristine, uh, you know, nature. There's no chips or anything in it. It's a perfect sphere. And the the insides move slightly, very slightly, almost imper- imperceptibly. But you can tell that there is something to this. But not, you're not sure exactly what. What color? It's blue. It's uh, a, uh, a dark blue. Uh. Not quite iridescent or glittery, but something in that neighborhood. Said stuff moves around on the inside. Mm-hmm. Like like rotating at an incredibly slow pace. Huh. Like the pale bag. Is this a egg? I don't know. It was in a bracelet. Yeah, but I mean it's as small as a gold piece to be clear. Be an egg. No, I'm not, I'm not saying anything about that. I just wanted to clarify the size. So, gold piece relative, like, half dollar? Yeah, quarter, half dollar, somewhere in there. So, yeah. Um, did either of us sense anything magical coming off of it? No, you sense it's magical. To, to what degree you're regarding it, though? <laughs> I've not seen anything like this in my previous travels, looting and all the fun pirate stuff. Not that you're aware of. Huh. Well, I beats me. Put it, put it away and we'll find out as soon as we get to uh, Sunder. Alright. You hear the... Probably better, better than that. 
I went and I get and put on my breastplate and then I put it, you know, like inside there. Near my heart. Okay. All right. You hear the bell on the bridge of the ship. Ding, ding, ding. We're heading out, moving off the reef. Oh, no. I want to I wanna, I wanna I wanna run on the bow. I'll trade your plane at style. style. Just stay on the edge. And it, 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 uh, after a few minutes, the crew get the, uh, the sails back into full status. Wind starts to pick up. They lift the anchor, and the ship slowly begins to move forward. And then you hear just a massive scraping sound, and the ship comes to a stop as people frantically drop sail. Uh, the, the captain says, "Jonathan," and Jonathan is frantically looking at maps and you know, measurements and taking things, and he's. He was over the side of the ship. Uh, it seems we have uh, have run aground on some transient reef that was not here before. <sighs> the captain's rubbing his eyes. Assess damage. And there's some crew who run below deck, and it takes them a couple minutes. They run they run down to the to the um, the cargo hold, and then come back. Uh, then you, you, so one of the crew runs, runs up to the bridge of the ship. Uh, you hear, you see them talk to the captain, but can't hear anything because you're not, you're not close enough, being on the main deck. Um, the captain looks for a second at him and shakes his head. I need someone to go underwater and take a look and see how we should navigate out of this little coral. Five gold to the volunteer. Anyone? Anyone? What is, what, what, what's, what's, what's the task? Just overboard for a second, hold your breath, look at the coral, and tell us where to go so we don't beach ourselves. Oh, no. Yeah, you can. All right. I'm, I'm going to uh, hop on the side and watch for any, any, any other, other shadows that may need to be taken away from uh, right here. Okay. So, uh, we want a second. Where's my thing? Um, so, Samuel, you jump in and fall into the water. It takes you a second. You look around and you you struggle against your own psycho psychology about this, and you t t it takes you a minute to convince yourself, and you breathe in water, and it's cold and thick, it fills your lungs, down your throat, in your chest, and you exhale the bubbles. Breathe in water, bubbles less than one more time, and you're just breathing in and out water, and it feels very weird. You feel a little scared at first, and uh, eventually you, you let the feeling pass, you look around and you see the ship has wedged itself a little bit on top of this little U-shaped branch of reef that has uh, been broken by the ship. And it's not very very much, but the ship would need to back up, veer left, and go forward. But just beyond where you're at, you see um, a, a nice landscape of various pretty coral, a bunch of different colored fish of various sizes, most of them under a foot long. You know, the fish hiding and bobbing in and out of corals. Um, in the distance, about 50 to 75 feet in front of the ship, you see something that's not coral, something that appears to be a, a perfect triangle of some sort that's peering out just above basically a hill that is made of coral. What are you doing? You say it's a triangle? It appears to be the uh, a triangle, a pyramid, a top of a spire of some sort that is just, a, just out of view. And uh, how far away do you say it's out of view? 
Um, it's got to be at least 50 to 75 feet um, in front of you, which would be 25 feet past the bell of the ship. Okay, so that's, uh, that's a little too much for me. I'm going to swim back to the surface. Mm -hmm. and yell up to uh, Jonathan, I'm assuming, is mm -hmm. tell them I just shift these to go back and to the left. Right, right. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Samael. We will, uh, we will tend to that. Uh, about, about how many uh, feet? You tell him it's roughly like, you know, back up 50, 20 feet and then to the left 30. That should be fine. Okay, uh, thank you. Um, you may come back aboard now. Uh, we're going to prepare to, to manage that if we can. Yeah, well, uh, whoever was driving this fucking boat kind of destroyed four weeks, so. I was waiting on that. Good job. Great. It's killing the animals. It'll grow back. It's a reef. Actually. Do it, do it, do it. Uh, I'm actually this reef thing. Please. Here's a starving ecosystem. So maybe it will grow back. Grow back. But maybe. Maybe we should work outside the reef next time. True. There aren't as many fish outside the reef. That's the point of the fucking reef. Oh my god. Okay, well, whatever. Where's my five gold? Uh, it will be delivered as soon as you get back on board and we get this figured out, don't worry. So. What is this guy? What race is this guy? Uh, he's a half elf. Definitely, definitely, definitely not in, in his elf are, are you, uh, are you getting back on the ship, Samuel? Uh, yeah, I, I'm not just going to stay in the water, that's for sure. It's a chill the reef. Okay. Yep. So. I'm assuming there's a little ladder on the ship? Yeah, there's ladders on both sides of the ship that are permanently attached. Okay, well, See, climb, right okay, climbing up and over, back on the ship. Um, it takes a while, about 10 minutes for them to get the oars together, the crew together. They stick the oars out, out of the boat, begin to row backwards. It takes a, another while, about 15 minutes or so, to get the, the boat to back up even a little bit. But eventually, they, they manage to get off of the reef. They... Uh, use the oars continue, continuing to reposition the boat a couple of degrees and then 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 push forward in that direction. The boat then uh, getting free of the reef, the oars are pulled back in, crew goes topside, drops full sail, and the boat begins to move, to move forward once again on track. Here, yeah, Mr. Samael, here's your gold. Thank you for correcting my error. Uh, count the gold greedily. One, <laughs> two, three. Appreciate it. If you need any more, uh, any more coral in space, you just let me know. Will do. Will do. Thank you. Okay. And you guys are off. Uh, it is getting towards the evening now. Um, the captain calls for another guard to be on duty. This time, the uh, elven lady, uh, Helianaka, takes the charge and she patrols the ship. Uh, uh, during this time, you see her walking around the, uh, the main deck. She takes a, st a stint up in the uh, crow's nest for a half hour, comes back down, walks around the lower deck. The cargo hold and just patrols generally everywhere, continually walking, occasionally inspecting some things, but largely keeping to herself. Taking frequent uh, trips, more than you would think so, to the uh, guards' quarters. But otherwise, nothing, uh, nothing odd. Can I follow her one of these times? Sure. Um, how are you going to follow her? Like just straight walking behind her, or stealth. stealthily, or a stealth check. Twenty-six, easy enough. Um, you don't think she sees you? Um, you're walking, keeping the pace behind her, but seeing where she goes. Um, you don't see her do anything suspicious throughout most of her tour. She uh, when. 
when she goes around to the cargo hold, she inspects some ties on things and checks the levels on boxes, make sure nothing's missing off the top, looks at a couple things, walks around. And then she gets to the guard quarters and looks around to see if anybody's fault is around her. Doesn't see anything, you don't think. She opens the door and walks in. You're able to you creep in behind her without much notice. She leaves the door cracked and uh, you manage to slide inside. Well, inside, uh, she looks around at the other quarters, looks at the windows, looks under the beds a little bit, stops at her own bed, looks under it, and fills with something, and stands up, straightens the bed sheets, and continues to walk around, looks underneath Pell's bed, under a uh, couple other beds, on top of beds, checking the sheets, patting them to see if there's anything in them, then walks out and back into the uh, lower deck if you wanted to follow. Yeah. She walks up to the main deck and uh, walks around to the cannons, checks the cannons, uh, inspects them, looks, looks at the, the loading end, uh, seeing if there's anything inside, closing them, making sure they're in right order, it looks like, testing the hinges, checking the count on the cannonballs and the supplies, and just makes a loop. Just does this loop a couple of times. Did I notice her take anything? Um, real perception check. Um, no, you didn't see anything. You saw her check a lot of things, but you didn't see her take anything. Nothing was pocketed that you saw. She just continuously does that. It looks like she's just making rounds. Mm -hmm. I'll just go back to my place in the bow. Okay. The evening is coming uh, to a close. What is everybody doing at this time? Night falls on the water. Hell's hard as fuck. It's fine for you. Okay. Sam, I am. I'm just uh, jingling the gold around, happy to be alive. Okay. You work anything that you're doing as the evening comes to a close? Gork. Channing. Is there anything that you're, that you're doing as the evening comes to a close? Uh, no, I was just going out in the bow. Okay. Laying down, enjoying the view. Well, Samael taking his place uh, wherever he deems fit, on the main deck or cargo hold or wherever. Same thing with Vorik. You can find rest wherever you like. Pell, I assume, would find his bed in the guard's chambers with uh, Ugbor as uh, Helianaka takes her remaining shift at night. And there is where we'll, we will end our session today with our first night on the water. Oh, okay.